Aha! Happy New what Year. Up? What's up? What it do? What's happening? We in the Welcome building. everybody. Yes, indeed. Welcome yes. everybody. We out here with the Gorilla Intellectuals, Kalanji yeah. Changa, Jared Ball. Was good. Man, Starting sound off. like a revolution. Sound like a revolution. <laughs> What's going on? It's about to go down. It's about to go down. Gorilla Intellectuals, we are here. Um, welcome to this new year of revolution. You know what right I mean? Right on, right it's on. Be great for change, right? Right on. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. It's good with you, Dr. J. Oh man, everything is good with me. Uh so so as we will let folks know, we are, you know, we 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 we're launching this new show with with, with the two of us uh Monday mornings to start off the week. Uh We'll talk about some of the, the 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 shifts as we go through and uh, the the transition, and we're gonna we we, we talk about our uh, the the two co-hosts that will also be joining us as this program ventures on. Uh, so there's a number of things happening that we'll we'll of course lay out and and uh, get more smooth with as time goes. But but uh, 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 but yeah. But but that said, all is good with me. I submitted the second edition of the Myth and Propaganda of Black Buying Power, okay. uh, New Year's Eve. So I met my deadline. I feel very free, about to enjoy my little winter break mm. uh, before the semester starts, and uh, uh, looking forward to a new year, getting busy here with BPM. So how yes, you feeling, man? Listen, I, I feel the same. You know, it's wonderful to be. Uh, we actually. Uh, one half of uh, the founders of Black Power Media. Right, know, right, so right. That, that's, that's good to uh, that we're going on our second year in February, February 17th. We have some major things coming up, uh, changes in lineup, uh, additions, you know, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, you know, I, I think that- Actually, doesn't that start our third year? The, well, it, February it, is the second anniversary, right? Yes, so we'll be starting off come, going into our third year. Right, so right, that'll right. Be, okay, that'll, be the, yeah. that'll be our second year. Right, it's, right, 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 right. This has been so wild. It seemed like we've been here forever and ever and ever <laughs> and ever. It's been a trip, you know what I mean? But we still applying pressure like a like a diamond mine. So, you know, you know, stick around. Yeah, yeah, Got yeah. It. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. So, folks, we see in the chat, welcome to the remixers. Good morning. No doubt. Uh, and yeah, this is the on. new... This is the new, so this is what we're doing. Like we, so Mondays, Kalanji and I, uh, soon to be joined by by uh, our two co-hosts that yes. that that I'll let Kalanji, I'll let you talk a little bit about in just a second. Okay. And we we're gonna start the week off with Gorilla Intellectuals. Uh, maybe it maybe it's gonna be Gorilla Intellectual University. I don't know. We we I think we're still working that out. Yes. But uh, uh, all the logos and the promos and all the, the intros and all that stuff will be on their way. And uh, for me, it's it's an exciting uh, uh, way to sort of reformat and, and work with some other folks uh, and do what we do, which for me, you know, the idea of 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 whether it's Walter Rodney's Gorilla Intellectuals or just the, the combination of those who are looking to 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 become insurgents. Uh, 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 and and uh, um, uh, you know the the play on those of us who are in the academy and who are who are officially professionally academics, uh, but uh, with with those who with those who are not, <clears throat> with the idea that intellectualism uh, doesn't uh, is not wedded to institutions and degrees. Uh, and that it's more important that that intellectualism be be wedded to 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 the nature of guerrilla activity. Uh, uh, so that's where anyway, that's sort of how I see what we're doing. And I'm excited about it and looking forward to it. Yeah. I, and I think it's necessary, just as you stated, because I think that oftentimes when folks think intellectual, you know, they think of the academy. They don't think George Jackson. You know what I'm saying? They don't right, think. Right. Malcolm X or Hajj Malik Shabazz, right. you know, they don't think Imam Jamil Alameen, formerly H. Rap Brown or Mumia, but these are folks who were absolutely, absolutely, um, you know, rebels in, in, in the cause, you know, and, and, and it's necessary. And when, when we talk about guerrilla intellectuals, of course, we're talking uh, folks like Walter Rodney. We're talking um, uh, so many others who have paved the way 
who've paved the way and laid it out. You know, so yes, Guerrilla Intellectual University, and it's not a new concept. Don't get it twisted. You know, because folks, you know, they 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 hear things nowadays and they uh, assume that you know this is this is something new or this is something in the last twenty right. years or right. something in the last thirty years. And you got to get a late pass. Now there's some folks who've come along and talked about being guerrilla intellectuals, but that's not the foundation. So what we're doing with Guerrilla Intellectual Universities, we're bringing on not just us, but we figured that uh, it's important to have women. So we invited a couple of our uh, sister uh, freedom fighters and uh, guerrilla intellectuals to uh, join us. And in the coming shows, you should see them on board. Um, folks like Dr. Janine Jones and um, one of our other favorites, Dr. Joy James. So From the I Council think, of Elders, too. Yeah, I think I think we'll be able to cover what needs to be covered. You know, so um, you know, y'all stay. Yeah, and it was really, it was really like like uh um I I, I take take ownership for this. Like there was some uh, uh my focus on my own deadline. We we had some miscommunication. The only reason they're not here this morning is that was some miscommunication as to when and how we were starting all of this. And uh, uh but they will be on their way. And uh, uh, and it's by the way, it's also the Guerrilla Intellectual University project is 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 something that we're working with them both on that expands beyond just this show. Yes. So yes. so there's going to be a lot coming. You know, just from this collective within the broader BPM collective, uh, which itself has a lot on its way this year, that that is is very uh, very exciting. And and the idea of being able to work routinely, uh, I, I'm I'm new to knowing uh, Dr. Jones. Oh, excuse me, but but the idea of, of working routinely with, with with Dr. James is very very exciting as well. So I'm looking forward to this. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So yeah. And and I, I want to point out something too because you know something that that's dear to my heart in particular is um, political education in action. Mm -hmm. and turning that theory into practice mm -hmm. you know what i mean so um we see this as a culmination of not just as we mentioned the the intellectuals but the ground workers the farmers you know the, the folks out there who are um who are, who are training and building in community you know because oftentimes they are left out oftentimes we go with the popular names oftentimes you know uh we assume that if your name is not associated or affiliated with certain types of individuals, that your work doesn't count. And we know a whole lot of ground workers who um, get dirt under their manicured nails. And some of them don't have manicured nails. In fact, some don't even have hands. But we're looking to, um, you know, uh, bring it to the table, bring it to the forefront, you know, and, 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 and show and prove what it is to be a freedom fighter. You know, right a lot of times there's so much theory, but that damn practice, boy. Sometimes when we get to that, you know, practice is only holding signs up at a protest. We got to move beyond that. We got to get out there and get 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 gritty with it. So, you know, I'm looking so, forward to it. So, by the way, you know, so like Riot Starter is going to continue. I mix what I like is going to continue. Uh, I think uh, as far as we, it's, in the immediate, I mix what I like will probably um, uh, emerge unscheduled and and as pop-ups so please stay tuned make sure you have all the bells clicked and everything uh fridays i think is going to take on a new name and have a new show with, with diallo and Geechee. we're working on that as well so so a number of things are sort of shifting and rebranding and then diallo's uh uh uh, uh as we've said he has his his proposals starting to go through the process here bpm as well too so he'll he, his own standalone show is likely on its way so there's right. a number of things all coming um so make sure you've all subscribed and have the bells on and all that kind of stuff and uh that way what's correction never miss anything yeah what's up what's up R riot started tv will be no more oh damn uh um, the changes coming fast and yes, furious the was, coming was, was, was... riot started tv uh <laughs> it's going through a transformation process, you know, so there will be a new show uh, coming up this Friday, still same okay, vein, right on. same vein, same uh, uh, flavor, 
but we want to nail it down and give it a, a, a new face and everything because I think that uh, it, it, it's necessary. So, no, I'm not going anywhere. You know, um, it won't be defunct. It's not renegade culture. That was a slug. Um, <laughs> it's going to be uh, fresh, new, improved. And um, like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm more excited about the political education and, and the action than anything. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what it's going to be about. We have marching orders. Yeah. But yeah, I see, you know, Big Teal and others. I mix what I like. Will it won't, at least for now, won't have like a scheduled time. I have to figure that out. Uh, but but I'll, I'll still be doing the show. Yeah, um yeah. you know so so it's 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 anyway it's just reshuffling a little rebranding here and there but but everything is all we're doing is adding really yes yes um yes. so so I, i've seen a couple people already in the chat kalanji have raised uh, i know we wanted to talk about uh, a little bit of what happened in the past year and yes. uh, uh um Oh damn! Let me just shout out to 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 Leroy Moore, Crip Hop Nation. Thank no you doubt. for the no uh, for the support. Uh, definitely appreciate you, and look to have him back on the pr platform as well. That's the first of the year, correct? Crip Hop What's Nation. That? Crip Hop Nation brings us the first super sticker of the year. The first super su first super sticker of the year. That's right. Right That's on. Right. Thank right you very shout much, and, and congratulations for that having achieved that honor. The first of the year. Yes. Yes. You know yes. I mean? Yes. We'll um, always love Crip Hop Nation. <laughs> yeah, so cool. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yes. So yeah, we. But uh, 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 in terms of a year in review, not so much everything, but there were at least a number of 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 deaths. People have transitioned that we wanted to acknowledge. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, and then yeah, we can maybe go over a couple things that happened over the last year uh, no doubt, beyond no that. Doubt. But no doubt. but I'll let you go ahead and get that started. Um, well, I, I wanted want. to. I wanted to kind of start off um, with, with um, like I said, like you just said, this past week, it's been a number of deaths, um, past week to 10 days. Uh, first, I'm going to acknowledge Dr. Frances Cress Wilson because of the fact that she transitioned on this day back in 2016, I believe. So, you know, mm -hmm. definitely want to uh, remember her for her work. Um, uh, but um, there's there's been a number of different transitions over the past uh, week and some change. One being um, our sister Wailea Jamal, which is uh, uh, Mumia Abu-Jamal's um, soulmate, I dare say, um, for the last 43 years. And before he went in, it's my understanding that they were actually together a little less than two years before he was, was uh, you know, sent up, set up. Um, so we want to definitely remember her for all her tireless work and efforts and being loyal to a brother. Um, I mean, when you're talking about you were with someone uh, outside the walls for a far shorter time than, than you were with him being behind the walls. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's a, uh, a testimony. And, um, you know, we honor uh, our sister Walea who was uh, buried on um, this past Friday. She was a Muslim, so we pray, um, you know, that that Allah makes things easier and for her and her family. And we send our condolences not only to Mumia because when we look at Mumia, he's had a lot of losses throughout the years. I know his daughter Goldie transitioned a few years ago. Um, I believe his brother transitioned. Uh, his sister uh, Lydia, who was actually many folks don't know was actually the wife of um, of uh, Shakamuku uh, uh, Bershango. Uh, Bershango, for many of you that, that read back in the day and, and continue to read, he did it, put out a number of books dealing with European religions. So he was actually Mumia's brother-in-law. And, you know, Mumia's took taking some losses. So we want to definitely keep him in our, in our sights and in our hearts. Um, another and brother... Just, ahead, just quickly before you move on from that, I just yes. wanted to to echo that, that and, and to 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 um, make the point that I mean, as as many who do work around uh, issues of incarceration have have noted that the suffering, obviously, of the person being imprisoned is is bad, uh, right. but it is it, it extends to their entire family. So that she would have suffered Mumia's incarceration for all those years, as you said, they were only married for a short time before he got locked up. Um, 
that's a long time to sort of is that they, you know, used to sort of parody in that song, you know, stand by your man. I mean, that's, right. that's a, uh, uh, and, and all the sort of echoing and reverberating pain from his incarceration is, is so yes, yeah, that's, that's, um, rest in power to her. And I'm, I, you know, and, 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 you know, yeah. definitely love to him and his, and the rest of the family. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Another brother that I just found out, um, the transition that we both know and both had history with uh, yeah. was a, a pioneer in internet radio, um, especially, let me, let me let me rephrase that, a pioneer in internet movement and consciousness when it comes to radio. And he was a brother who actually gave me my first shot uh, on air as far as a, a, um, a host. And he, his his uh, radio show, Harambe Radio, I'm not sure how long it was in existence, but I know I got on around around 2006 and uh, my show was called uh, the FTP Power Hour. And on that particular show, uh, many of you who have been following Riot Start have heard the, um, the uh, Muhammad Ahmed or the Max Stanford interview that actually came from Harambe Radio. But I interviewed everyone from Raz Kaz to um, uh, Sam Greenlee uh, and and a number of, I mean, just so many people. And I literally, like I mentioned to you um, a few days ago, Jared, I was literally looking for this brother some weeks back because I'm like, man, some of the content that we had was uh, incredible. And, you know, I don't have it anymore. But yes, Delaney Amon, um, but yeah, yeah, I just wanted to pull up his 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 name and image. Yeah, it, 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 he was a really good brother. I, I had the pleasure of knowing him and his son briefly, uh, and and was uh, uh, and I can't remember if it was called "I Mix What I Like" or not. But I had a, he invited me to do a show on that same Harambe radio. So so we were sort of in a satellite working together and didn't even realize it at one point. Yeah, uh, and or didn't remember and uh, <laughs> really. Uh, <laughs> A really good dude and and sort of a, a quiet, uh, unassuming, very African centered, very proud, you know, uh, brother. And uh, and I have to say, you know, he he was so proud and stuck to his principles that he fired me. You know, not that I was being paid, but but he had to let me go right. because he had said, you know, I want you to, you know, because I, I had pitched that I wanted to do this political hip hop show. And he was a little skeptical because he does. He didn't like the language. You know, he didn't right. want the 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 N words and the B words and the regular curse words. And I said, no, I clean it all up and I do political stuff. And I got sloppy. I got lazy with the editing. And was mm -hmm. like, he's not, you know, and and he let a couple of them go. And then he, you know, and, and after a couple of times, he was like, man, I got to let you go. Uh, but even then he was kind and it wasn't hostile. It was right. just like, you know, you, we had an agreement, you're not, you know, and, and he was very clear. I don't want that because I want my people to be able to tune in and never have to worry about, uh, uh, you know, a, a word being used, even if it's in a political context. Sure. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, and and uh, uh, rest in peace to him, and and love to him and his family as well. Um, yeah. I, uh, yeah we, anyway, so yeah, yeah. I I, I would dare say, and 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 you know, I don't know how you feel about the statement, but for me, I would dare say that part of um, my thoughts on BPM came out of Harambe Radio, right? Because on. it was it was an audio piece. I, I, shout out to Brother Keedy as well, the Conscious Roster over on the West Coast. But those two brothers, uh, back in the day, at one particular point, they were kind of the, the go-to folks when it came to getting the type of information that, that you're getting here on BPM. So we have to pay homage to, um, you know, folks like Delani. I have a picture that I took with him some um, years ago. We were down in uh, Richmond. It was him... Um, Dr. Kamal Cambone and uh, Singor Bay. And, uh, you know, I took this picture with him because to me, these were all like OGs and I was much younger, short locks and all that. And, um, you know, it, it was it was one of the pictures I was proud of because not because I considered these brothers super revolutionary. Of course, some are whatever, but I looked at them as workers mm. and I respect people who are serious 
about what they do. I respect people who are serious about their craft, even if I don't agree with what they do. Mm. You know what I mean? It's so much silliness and buffoonery and, and, and a faking, you know, that we overlook the workers. It's like we talk about when we talk about the ant, the siafu. Ants are all around us. You know what I'm saying? But we look at them as insignificant until they're in our homes and they're, you know, on our counters or something. Then it's like, you know, we have an ant problem. You know what I mean? But the workers are always around us. So I definitely salute, um, you know, that that brother for his efforts. And he was a dentist as well, correct? Uh, That's right. Uh, he was uh, a dentist. That's right. And I had, you know, uh, I had the pleasure of because uh, he, he, he at the time worked uh, not too far from me in, in Maryland. Uh, so, so, and I think he was, he was initially hosting the, the broadcasting out of his dentist office. Wow. Wow. Um, so he, you know, uh, but, but he was an early, for me at least, he was a, a sort of, to your point, a pioneer of the digital space and using right. it in the way we're trying to use this space with BPM. Right. Uh, so, so. Yeah, He's a one man know. gang too. So he, he didn't have yeah, no. the whole crew. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the the podcast. Um, excuse me, the host because this was before podcast, right? Right. Yeah, right. the host and everything, and and you know it wasn't. I mean, it's funny because listening to it, it has that, it has that hollow sound, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of takes me back to to the records. You know, what I'm saying it's like that's that's the, that 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 sound that we miss. An know, AM radio. Yes. Yes. So exactly, that's exactly what it was uh, akin to. Uh, you know, AM radio. So definitely, uh, you know, salute to uh, Delani uh, Aman. And we will be having a um, tribute to him in the next coming weeks. So look out for right that. Right on. Um, you want to keep on going with some of these folks that you're uh, to? Yeah, yeah. Who else was on? Who else did you have on on, on the list? Well, um, we, 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 we're going to speed it up, but I'm going to say. Uh, okay, yeah. Anita Pointer from the Pointer Sisters. Oh, right uh, on. Our main man Pele. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I talked about him the other day too. So yeah, yeah. Rest in peace to him. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Gangsta Boo. Uh, yesterday, of course, she was found uh, transition. Um, pope Benedict, who I'm going to give an honorable mention, and this this sounds crazy, me saluting the Pope. But the, the the one thing that I can give Pope Benedict is that when Troy Davis was scheduled to be executed, he actually sent a letter from the Vatican asking that they commute his sentence. Uh, and this was right before the first execution. Mm. And the trifling governor, Sonny Perdue here, he held on to the letter to after a decision was made on that Tuesday. And then he said, oh yeah, we got a letter from the Pope on Monday. This is that Wednesday. So he was gonna allow, if they didn't pardon, excuse me, if they didn't commute that sentence, uh, or excuse me, extend it, then he was gonna, uh, allow Troy to be executed and not say anything about Pope Benedict writing that letter. So I'll give Benedict that. Everything else, you know, that's just, we give credit where it's due. But also uh, your girl, Barbara Walters, who is the, uh, one of the state's uh, finest uh, reporters <laughs> of <laughs> imperialism, colonialism, capitalism, and all of the above. She lived in 93, like all these... <laughs> You know, I was trying to think, I have no, I know, obviously I know she's been around for a long time or had been around for a long time, mm -hmm. but for some reason I have no memory of any of her work. I know she interviewed a lot of big names. She had her own power, what she would consider her signature interviews, but I, I for some reason, even though she was, you know, a, a dominant news personality my entire life. Yeah. I can't think of, I'm like, I, anyway, I don't know. I, so, right. so, you know, I just was thinking that's how weird that is. I was, I was like, shouldn't I have some memory of some, but. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it's like, you think about folks like her and. Walter yeah. Like I know she interviewed I, Castro. Like I, like I know, she, like I, I understand that she spoke to Castro. Right. But when I think of, 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 a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a Castro interview, it's not with her. Mm -hmm. Or it's not, I don't, I, again, like that still doesn't bring her to my, anyway, I, I don't know. It's weird. It's just weird. I don't know. Yes. My yes, bad. Yes. Go ahead. Sorry. About yeah. That. No, no, it's all good. I mean, you know, I, I don't, um, 
you know, I can sit here and act like I, I lose a, lose some sleep or a, a wink or something <laughs> because Barbara Walters, who the white ass is gone, <laughs> that's kind of off the top. But nah, I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, she she didn't represent us. And that's just, I'm going to leave it at that to be nice. But even in a, even like, I'm even thinking like, even in a, a, a not, like, not that I would expect anything politically uh, aligned, but I, I, I don't know, man, maybe I, I, I just, I'm like, like, I have memories of, of anywhere. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't right, matter. Right. I mean, it's know, all it, good. It is. It is. Um, That's her job. I got to say, this is real quick, man. Shout out to whoever Peter Griffin is because uh, I was, I'm literally talking to my wife yesterday about this. This is a major issue. And I didn't know it was, it would have, I wasn't sure how noticeable it was, but I do need a new desk. I do need a new desk chair. Um, oh, okay. And that's exactly what happens. I didn't know you all heard it. I, I sometimes see you, you may rec sometimes see me sink lower. I didn't notice, but shout out to Peter Griffin. Yeah, well. The chair, the chair, the chair malfunctions and hisses as yeah. it sinks, as it as it Peter's paying <laughs> Peter's playing paying close attention. He knows how your chair sounds. So it's like certain sounds if Peter's walking through the mall or something, he is that street that's he's gonna turn around and hiss. It's like Jared's chair. <laughs> anyway. But anyway, shout out to Peter Griffin. Um but yeah, so there, there's a lot going on. I, I, I saw someone mention something about uh, 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 made a comment around the whole guerrilla intellectual thing. We'll get to that a little bit later. Yeah, Crip Hop Nation was asking. I, I actually saved that comment. We can come back to it okay. about okay. us de defining the term again. Um, uh, we did at the top of the show, but we can come back to it. We can do it now if you want. I mean, we can, you know. I mean, it's all good, man. I mean, it's like, and, and, and for the record, we're clear that there is a difference between uh, in many cases, the gorilla, gorilla and the intellectual. And there's a point where it comes together, right? And, and this is what the efforts we're uh, attempting to make. And we want folks to understand that uh, if you don't know by now, the purpose of what, it, what we're doing is to introduce theory and practice. You know, so the majority of the folks that you're gonna see on this particular platform, uh, will have a track record of, of, of something, of com completing something, completing tasks, not just, you know, I feel this way about the situation. You know, we have folks who are accomplished in, in, in their work when we talk about revolution and absolutely no, we're never looking for, looking to be um, um, acknowledged or even respected by the state for that matter. You know, whatever the state feels is not really, you know, it's not what we feel, so, but anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, like, and I'll probably keep coming up with various variations of this, but for me, like, again, it's, 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 you know, you and I talked about just doing a show together, and uh, um, so for me, it's, it's, it's a lot of again rebranding and repackaging what we're already been doing, right. and and for me, you know, uh, I think of it as, you know, um, I'm not advocating. Uh, speaking for myself, I'm not advocating and I'm not participating in guerrilla warfare, but I do see myself intellectually, uh, even professionally, as someone who has been, uh, who has to operate similarly, that is uh, in margins, in obscurity, under the table, um, to to convey certain messages, to do certain work. And, and I like that sort of overlap. And then as we said earlier, the idea that intellectuals uh, um, uh, an intellectual is not necessarily someone who is uh, degreed and professional okay. in, their, in, in, in academia. Any, you know, uh, um, anyone can be, and, may, and maybe all of us are in ways intellectuals. Uh, but we're trying to encourage, I'm, from my vantage point, trying to encourage a certain approach to intellectualism uh, that is as radical uh, uh, as a gorilla would be seen in traditional warfare. So then lastly, and I do, looking at one of the emails, you know, I do think the intent is to have the name include, and, and we can ask for your, the thoughts of the remixers here, but, but a gorilla intellectual university uh, with the idea that again, uh, um, 
the the university can be comprised of or a university can be comprised of uh, guerrilla intellectuals and be extra institutional, uh, which is where I think a lot of the best work actually happens anyway. So and then, by the way, before I forget, I meant to say this, just be, meant thinking to Dr. James, uh, she'll be joining me later um, this month at some point. So stay tuned to talk about her new book, In Pursuit of Revolutionary Love, which I started reading last night and is is. Uh, uh, fantastic. So Absolutely. I'm looking forward to that as well. So anyway, I don't know, Kalanj, if you wanted to add any any to that in terms of the definition. Yeah, uh, no, nah, I, I think I think um, we'll, we'll see it as we move along. You know, I don't mm -hmm. think we have to uh, get too deep into that because we'll be okay. here all day right dealing with that. I think folks will witness it, and I, and 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 just like with with any any efforts that we've made in the past, I think we all have um, a track record of delivering. You know what I mean? So, you know, we can't please everybody all the time, but, you know, in due time, we do what we need to do with that time. You know, so um, we see it as that. But um, I'm, I'm happy to be here. You know, I think that it's a good thing. Um, I haven't done the uh, the co-host thing in a while outside of Remix, you know, as far as a regular show. Of course, uh, you know, we did the whole Renegade Culture thing for like three years you know, which was a, a great starting point and to be back uh, sharing ideas and, and bouncing off of each other is a, um, you know, it's a good thing and having some balance because I think that um, it's necessary for us to to uh, always provide balance. The one thing that, that I recognize myself, uh, for instance, is that I have I get a lot of text messages and uh, DMs and and, and of the sort of folks who are never in the chat, right? And real good people, real good workers, real good, I mean, real serious um, uh, folks who, who, who study and train. And, um, you know, it, it's beautiful to know the range we have. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to tapping into all these different sectors and, 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 and um, you know, people as a whole so oh yeah no doubt no doubt and um uh uh and we'll we'll get it we'll you know everything will smooth out and 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 to those who are still asking questions about the name etc um uh i know personally i'm down to hear your thoughts and and when when doctors james and jo jones join us mm -hmm. uh um in 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 future shows we can happily have you know have you put those questions to them as well they'll have their own you know responses interpretations etc and so forth so right uh, and, and, and this you know. this for the record we should note that this is the this is orientation this is the introduction this isn't the the end all means this is hey happy <laughs> that first new year, year. Happy right. Revolutionary <laughs> new year we're here you know what i'm saying like what's up how y'all doing you know so that's what we're coming with um, right on, right on. Yeah, what, what else we got going on though? Um, you know, definitely. A lot. So my thing is, so so the, the only things that I have, I admit, you know, I'm still coming out of the the fog of uh, um, being my, myopically, if that's even a word, overly focused on my own work. So there's a lot of things I'm not up on, and other than some silly stuff. So there's a couple silly things that I know I have that we can, you know, relatively at least, uh, uh, you know, given where where I know we we often end up, uh, that we could talk about, and then um, we could certainly invite some input from 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 the remixers. Uh, I do want to um, quickly remind folks to again check all the content that's been coming out on the channel overall. Uh, I just uploaded what the the next batch of Asada's chant uh, a series that that will start coming out over the next uh, the rest of this month. There's a there's a whole bunch of them coming this month. Um, uh, of course, the Remix Morning Show starts back up tomorrow morning, so so definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, there's been a number of other drops from the sisters, uh, uh, the Brokish crew. And uh, uh, the LBS crew have dropped a couple pieces. Um, please go check the stuff that I've been doing, uh, including the special members only, which which th that earn your leisure joy. I mean, this is again why I, I you know I like that that you know you know when I see when I see earn your leisure teaming up, 
with 19 keys and and drink champs i'm like why we need to we need to form more of our own crews as well so that's why you know another reason why i like this little team up here um because 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 it's a lot of madness out there that that is only increasing so when when even when people are saying what do you think about your year in review for me 2022 was like like the the again in part because of my own particular work but but it was like the 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 return of black capitalism with a vengeance. It was like the. It, it's like. I, 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 I agree. I agree with that, man. And and I think that this is this is a good um, checking point. And 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 for me, one of the things that uh, we'll be doing, I, I call it RSTV for now. One of the things we'll be doing over at RSTV is um, focusing more on on on. Uh, on the basics, you know, uh, basics like political prisoners, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because I think that oftentimes we're overlooking that. So I think the first show we'll kick off will be um, around Dr. Matulu Shakur. And you all should, you know, check in because as you know, we we never know who may call in. Let's just say that. But that'll be on uh, on this Friday. But, you know, I want to take it back to, to COINTELPRO because I think that we talk loosely about COINTELPRO as if it doesn't exist and, and counterinsurgency as a whole, because there's so much that's going on that ties into counterinsurgency right now. You and know? are you yeah. responsible for the Black Film Festival that we've been running? Did you that, drop all that? That I did drop it, but that was courtesy of the Imam Jamil Action Network. Right. So um, that was, um, yeah, it, it was it was something in the works um, that um, that kind of got got pushed out uh, the way it did, basically. But I encourage you all to check out the um, the uh, Freedom Fighters Film Festival that was housed this past week um, uh, on BPM. So you know, and, and we're looking to have more of that. I think we need more content, more information, and for folks out there who are you know, left of the left, you know, who are considered freedom fighters. Any events that you're doing, any programs you're doing, education, get with us, email us, because we want to utilize our platform to educate and inspire those amongst us. As long as it's not garbage. Now, you know, like some of you come with your own agenda. If it's going to help us as a whole, we can we can work with you. Left of the left. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Uh, Liberation advocates on that. Go ahead. Right on. No, no, I was just, I'm just in the chat a little bit. And Mark, I agree with you. I, I literally was was texting um, uh, Hiram and Daruba yesterday mm-hmm. on that very subject, trying to push them in that direction. Uh, anyway, so I'm with you on that. But yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, anyway, so speaking of the sports show. Uh-oh. I can't help. Please, everyone, forgive me for this. But my but but my commies lost again, which I think is hilarious. So my man, Big Simple, this is my new favorite. He had his response to the to the Washington Commanders, basically losing chance to make the playoffs this year. <laughs> shut up, please. Just shut up. I I, I got some. It, it, it just don't. I, I don't understand. <laughs> we did not come with no effort, no effort whatsoever. I I I don't know what what to say to you. <laughs> this, this, this is this is embarrassing. We didn't come with no effort. Riverboat Roller, <laughs> what are you doing? Going for it! Scott Turner trash! <laughs> trash. Who, who is this dude, man? <laughs> he goes by Big Simple. He's just so so I don't watch the NFL anymore. I I right. I, I, I used to be a fan of the Washington football team my whole life. I was so my whole I was overly into it. Like so in many ways he represents my the old me. Right, That's right, how right. I used to feel when, when my team lost. 
at literally like yelling like so so as we've come into this YouTube space and and I'm catching up still to to what exists I'm finding all of what for me and for us generationally would be new uh new folks commenting on the world we've all been involved in for a long time so so right, to right. to me he represents the newer generations behind me who have Un unlike mine, never seen that team win. They've never seen the team be successful. And they have YouTube channels. So right. there's a whole bunch of these Washington Commanders channels that have popped up or that exist that I've come into contact with or just, you know, been watching a little bit. And most of them are people, you know, half my age who, right. again, never seen the team win. And they're pissed. And I'm sitting there like... It, you, you know, you know, as wild, I'm I'm so out of the loop that when you said Washington Commanders, I didn't even know what the Washington Commanders was. It, the, <laughs> so, the, the R words, the slurs, yeah. Daniel Snyder's uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ponzi scheme or 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 money oh, yeah. laundering no, I'm, I'm, operation. I'm, I'm here now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, I I just been boycotting so hard that that you know, shit. And, and speaking of that, shout out to uh, uh, the family of Franco Harris. I know Franco Harris. Made his transition. Uh, oh last wow! Week. Yeah. Oh damn! Days, I didn't know that. Yeah, three days before he was supposed to be um, inducted into the uh, Hall of Fame, I believe it's fiftieth year, uh, something of that nature. But yeah, so you know, shout out. And to no, him. Anthony, I don't. I, I shout out to Franco Harris, uh, rest in power, and thanks for beating the Dallas Cowboys all those years in my childhood. I used to love him for that. And, it's probably, and, probably last time I was watching uh, footballs back then with Tony Dorsett and. Franco Harris and all those yeah, so, but uh, that's but that's how Ant, to Anthony's question, that's how hard I've fallen from from that sport. Like I can't, I, I I've even tried to tune in everyone, but 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 the Colin Kaepernick thing was the last straw for me, and now everything with the Daniel Snyder uh, stuff that's been coming out is just you know added dirt on the grave of my former love of that sport. I just can't. And then, and then now knowing more about what it does physically to the players right. with all the evidence of that, I just can't support it anymore. I don't, I can't even enjoy it anymore. And, and, and honestly, I'm having a hard time enjoying, you know, the true, my true sport of choice, which is, is soccer or world football. Um, Vinicius Jr., the the great Brazilian player, the the dark skinned African Brazilian player uh, who plays for Real Madrid, one of the best teams in the world, uh, just got just had a major incident on the pitch where the fans of I believe Villa Real in Spain started yelling in in it by the thousands, mono mono, calling him a monkey in Spanish again. Wow. And he called out the 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 head of the league and said, "You all claim you've been doing something about this for years. What's up?" And the dude got it back at him on Twitter, saying, "You know, basically, be quiet. We work. We've been working hard on racism for a long time." And Vinic Vinicius is like, "Then why am I getting chanted at like that?" But I mean, by thousands of people. Right. Right. Because that. That's, so that's, it's that's, very difficult. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 And that, that's important because you know, it, it's still a reminder that you are a, a product, you are a commodity to them, you are, you are a performer. You know, that's what they look at you as, as a dancing monkey. And that's the reality of it. You know, and until we understand that that's what these corporations are about, then we will constantly, consistently um, be shocked and surprised when they do the things they do. But we, we can't talk about soccer without talking about Pele. And for, for many of us, you know, coming up, if you didn't know anything about soccer, if you didn't know or, or, or world football, as you say, football, F-U-T-B-O-L, if you didn't know anything about that, you knew who Pele was. Pele was the Muhammad Ali of, of, of soccer. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to talk about, about sports, one of our uh, dominant forces, you know, and, and you know, I, I wasn't with him politically because I, I saw his his silence in many cases but um you know as, as an athlete you know as as a as a a human with determination 
I think that uh, that was driven by determination. And uh, I, I think that Pele was was one of those folks, man. So what, what's your thoughts on Pele? So as I said the other day, you know, uh, to me as a kid who played soccer and in, in, as, as, as a young man in the late 70s and 80s, uh, he was, you know, before digital, before all this, we could turn on TV and see them play. He was one of the few that we got to see that the coaches would make sure we saw on tape. Uh, everybody talked about, and I loved, even though it went off and unspoken, I loved that he was this dark-skinned black man that everybody revered. Yeah. I loved it. And that nobody, even even white boys that I would argue with, you know, on the field or whatever, everybody would have to acknowledge he was the best. There was nobody better. Yeah. Um, now, as you point out, politically, uh, and I don't know enough about this uh, in the history there, but, but I have, what I do know is that politically, uh, he was not an aggressive, uh, outspoken person for black or poor people. He was used by the state. Um, in fact, people would talk about, you know, particularly in the 70s under the the, the dictatorships, uh, the 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 state picked the the starting eleven of the Brazilian team. Right. And if you if your name was on the list and you tried to pop off with some rah rah rah. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't, you know, getting canceled in today's parlance. It was getting canceled for real, like disappeared for real. Yeah, so right. I, I, I it's it's hard for me to be critical of someone who came onto the scene. I mean, he was picked by the national team at 16. Right. Like that's unheard of. 16 years old. He was he scored three, two goals in the World Cup final at 17 years old. Without a doubt. So, come, come, come so my, 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 yeah. Go ahead. So my only point in that is to say, never mind what it means p playing wise, but it, but but to expect someone at that age who's immediately plugged in in that way to evolve a certain politics and performance of those politics that we would truly appreciate is hard. So it's hard for me to right, be right. too critical of him for that. Um, and that said, a, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, ahead. and that, that's that's important that you say that because the thing is conditions and your surroundings also dictate your reality you understand what i'm saying so even though there there was uprisings in in brazil and, and in a number of different places around the world during that time they kept him as isolated as possible and he knew like you said you know that it 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 it, it can literally cause you to disappear not off the scoreboard but off the 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 the, the board itself the, the chalkboard yeah. yeah so <laughs> like for me coming up in in a, in a, in a Trini household, you know, mm. Pele was, you know, like uh, many folks in the Caribbean, as, as my brother pointed out, uh, he was our Superman because we saw what, I mean, his, his amazing athletic abilities, you know what I mean? So that says something, you know, just, just on the determination part. Again, at the beginning of this show, I said, I respect people who are serious about what they do. Now, I don't agree with everyone politically. In fact, let the record reflect. I would damn near venture out and say, I don't agree with damn near a good 70% of the politics here at Black Power Media. But that's just me. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to agree on everything. We don't have to be on the same page, but we damn, damn sure got to be in the same book. And that's what's important because we get confused and we want to throw the entire baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, and say, okay, well, did they do this? Did they do that? Did they do this? I mean, shit, we could check some of the track records, you know, throughout. And and I'm sure that we all have some blemishes and glitches that, you know, we probably wouldn't be too, uh, you know, too proud to present. So I like this question because you mentioned Muhammad Ali. Quaker Anarchist is asking about the comparison, and 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 my two cents on it between Pele and Muhammad Ali would be would be starting where I left off that that Muhammad Ali uh, benefit is maybe not the right word, but but he had a, a proximity to radical politics that I don't think Pele ever had, right. uh, and he had proximity to being treated. I, again, I don't want to use the word better, but I, f I think that the state in the United States was dealing with its celebrities differently than Brazil and the state there was dealing with its celebrities. Right. And I think that Muhammad Ali probably had a little more wiggle room in that context, being that the United States uh, uh, um, 
you know, I, I used to make the joke all the time that that we colonized here are still vis-a-vis -vis to the rest of the world, the 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 house colonized. And I don't really like that anymore because even house slaves, th that that whole dynamic is misunderstood and they didn't have it good. But but relatively speaking, I just, you know, I just any, so anyway, I, I think that that would be that. Um uh, I, I would think in, we're in the most arrogant difference. slaves yeah. too. You know what I'm saying? I think to this day we're the most arrogant slaves on the planet because we, we look at other Maybe. folks, we look at look at our colonizers as chief colonizers. You know right. what I'm saying? So since we live uh uh we're we're adjacent to our colonizer, then we become colonizers ourselves by default. Right. And that colonization doesn't it don't don't necessarily have to be physically, mentally, you know, spiritually, whatever. You know, we 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 are elitist oftentimes in how we move. We think that we have all the solutions, we think that we know everything that's going on. You know what I mean? But most folks that you talk to that have all these answers, they don't really get dirty. They don't really do the work. You know what I'm saying? You're on the sideline trying to be a coach or a pundit. Yeah. And I mean, if you know, you feel no shame, do as you please. Now, when it came to Ali, Ali used to be my favorite boxers. Again, I respect his skills. I didn't respect his politics. For that small frame in time during the Vietnam War, indeed. But I, I was upset when he turned his back on Malcolm. You know what I'm saying? I was upset when um, when he let that torch. <laughs> you're damn right. And they, and they used him and his handlers. His so handlers that would be what I would him. say. Ali in 96 at the Atlanta Olympics and Pele were exactly the same. Like that, Pe that Muhammad Ali and Pele were probably exactly because they were used in exactly the same way. Absolutely. Um, uh, I, I just don't think Pele ever had his his Vietnam moment, to your point. Like like right. that would be the maybe that's a better way of making the the, the, the comparison. Right. Um, but on the field. Now, if I was going to make I, this might even be blasphemous and no disrespect to anybody, but on the field, in terms of uh, 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 the practice of their their sport. Pele was, I think, better at soccer than Muhammad Ali was at boxing. And I think if and what people don't even, I, what many young people, I think, unfortunately, don't realize is that everything you see a player doing today, he already was doing. Right. There are moves attributed, for instance, the Cruyff attributed to Johan Cruyff and other moves like that, that he was already doing. He had already done them. That's documented on video now that you can see on tape. So, so he was, he, he was, and I just heard somebody else who played in his era, who was a, a um, uh, was it Van Nistelrooy, another big name who was talking about him, somebody, and they were saying like, he, he could head the ball better than the best, best head, head, header. He could, he was quicker than the quickest person. He was stronger than the strongest person. His, his knowledge of the field, his eye, his vision, his passing, he could shoot with both feet. He right. was, he was a monster on the pitch and Absolutely. even there was a, even a youtube clip i saw of him playing in a game in his 50s where he was still looking like i mean yeah. it was it's crazy how good he was on the field so yeah yeah anyway yeah it's so, it's, it's just it's just a shame indeed, it's too bad indeed. long live pele pele you know what i'm saying uh you know definitely uh and i, I mean just looking back man All i don't that. know yeah yeah man just like just coming up and just, just. Yes, Yipper in his fifties. Go check it. It's on YouTube. Yeah, he's he's in a legends game in his fifties, yeah. and it and you, you can he's still see, still get that. See, but he's oh my god, he he like I mean, me in my fifties. No, I mean still not, not me and mine. I was looking <laughs> at it like I, I, I went out and played in a in a uh, in a game just before the pandemic, a little pickup game. Uh, shout out to the Africans out here in Howard County. They they they, they get they get their game on in, anywhere, and I made it through. But I did have to. No, actually, I didn't. I, I had to leave early, and it took me. I, I was like two weeks to recover. Mm. And 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 believe me, nobody out there looked as good as Pele did in his fifties. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I played I played football um, uh, about tackle American football about nine years ago and you played tackle football 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got out there in your forties. Yeah, I'm, I'm still fast. Sorry. But Sorry. Oh, they, oh, they, they was trying to off me though. That's <laughs> insane. I, you I was a playing, lunatic for real for that. <laughs> I was playing with the community. You know what I'm saying? Uh, with, with the Muslim shout out to the Western uh, community master and uh, Ma'am Jamil's crew. And I realized at that particular point how many people <laughs> wanted to tackle me in real life. Because it's like, when I, every time I got the ball, and, I, and I, I scored three on them, you know what I mean? Not bad for a cat in his 40s. But, uh, you know, when they tried to uh, level, they definitely put it on it. Oh, no, we went, we, we, I went to my daughter's, that, that her team had a, a parents game a couple years ago. Hmm. And I went and I and I played a few minutes in that, and then I took myself out because I was like, they were going too hard. Right. They were trying to play for real, and somebody did a sliding tackle on a a, a man did a sliding tackle on a woman right. uh, that was so hard she had to be ambulanced off. They had to put her in a stretcher with the thing around her neck and ambulance her off. Man, that was, that was and and I left at that point. I literally left. Was, they kept probably playing. Was a good time to leave because I was <laughs> well. First of all, I was like. Honestly, yeah. in my mind, I was like, "We'd have been fighting." He need to get absolutely. And it was a dude. I, did it? A dude did this, and uh, forgive yeah, me on the gender good. stuff, but a dude did this to a woman. To took her completely out. out. I and I was looking around like, "Why? Where's like? Where's her husband? Where's her friends? Where's yeah. who's letting this go?" We, we'd had to tackle him back, but um, nah. nah I was and, like, "I'm going home." I was like, "Baby yeah. girl, get your stuff." <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I I do miss playing tackle football though. So every now and then I'm thinking about it. I'm no like, man, I gotta get it back in order. But it probably won't be the good thing. I think, I, last... I think that's insane that you even played at all in your 40s. To me, sounds yeah. insane. When we did the Spartan run, maybe about uh, the Spartan race. Uh, it must have been about five, six years ago now. Um, mm -hmm. some of the brothers from the joint. That was like six miles, mud, uh, mm -hmm. you know, climbing and all types of other stuff. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back about getting back into that, man. I'm just, I don't know. Anything. All right, well, let me, let me, um, if if I can, let me, let me pull something else up. Some other silly shit real quick. What, 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 uh, what we got going. And this this uh, will not be how Gorilla Intellectual will be with the silly shit. No, no, we're going to. This introduction, gonna, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, we're going to. We want people to get this upset. Is, this is Happy New Year and all that stuff. You know, we're going to. But in 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 one of the last little residuals I just saw from uh, the work I'm, you know, that I that I end up focusing on a lot about. So, so advertising age is one of the leading outlets, has long been one of the leading outlets for a discussion, obviously, of the advertising community, uh, what's going on in the marketing world. And they've been talking a lot lately about this, this issue of DEI, mm -hmm. diversity, uh, uh, equity, and inclusion, is it? Or diversity, equality, and inclusion. It's like they're big, big deal. It's like, it's like a, like, so everybody wants to know. So they, so, so even ad age has, Put together its DC DEI council members, uh, a DEI council that they said they launched in fall of 2020 um, to take a candid look at the publication's coverage as well as events planning and with the goal of advancing diversity and inclusion within the newsroom. And I'm just scrolling through here, wondering if I would see anything that was interesting. And 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 lo and behold, just in particular because we just did this thing with. Revolt TV and Drink Champs is I see Detavio Samuels here, the CEO of Revolt, um, mm. is on this council. So I just couldn't. It, it, the only thing I'm adding here is, um, and I believe I've read Kai Wright's work somewhere. That name sounds familiar, but but I just couldn't help notice the 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 overlap between Puffy, Revolt TV. Drink champs, earn your leisure, the promotion of a lot of this nonsense, and th this heavily, you know, this heavy involvement in in uh, overseeing or or helping the leading marketing industry, you know, uh, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, industry rag or whatever they call it uh, uh, has them has 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 someone from that involved in managing their diversity equality and inclusion inclusivity 
uh, efforts. So I, I mean, that, that's 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 the connection, right? That's that's what propaganda is. You know that that's uh, I mean, make make it look good. You know, make it make it sound good. Make it feel good. You know, um, let's uh, capitalize off of our pain. Let's you know what I mean. Let's let's capitalize off of our our mental illnesses. You know, and our shortcomings. Right. You know, but um, that that, that that's wow. We actually um, we had had the opportunity to uh, we had got an offer to uh, do something at some revolt um, uh, conference. What was that last year or whatever? But hmm. of course, we didn't we didn't we didn't go for that particular angle. I don't know. I mean, clearly it must have been an, an error or a typo, and they thought we used someone else. But you know, I, it, it's. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I just, you know, the other the other way I was thinking of it is that this is, again, part of the whole that that Christopher Mott woke Imperium thing that 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 like um, when Larry Fink of 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 BlackRock is telling people, if you want my investment money, and of course you do, because I have all of it, uh, you better have a good DEI score. You 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 better be pre- presenting your company as one that is in, um, worried about diversity and the environment and gender and sexual equality, uh, uh, not because we actually give a damn, but right. this is what the the world wants to see. So we're going to give it to them in our version. So so we're going to market and advertise a new and diverse world. Uh, with the inspiration and analysis and the interpretation of black capitalists and uh, the black bourgeoisie and the black black business community, uh, yeah. and then the, you know as we saw in the rest of that group, you know the Asian version of that and the Latino version of that and the queer version of that and the da da da, da you know of like course. that's what they're gonna you know yeah. it's like yeah. and it's like wow all right you know and, and, and watch who the chosen folks are from the quote unquote uh, the, the nonprofits and the quote unquote grassroots. You know, watch some of these folks who who uh, some of some of your friends, you know, they, they'll first chance they get, they'll be on board because yeah. it's all about control. And of course, as we talked about, that's what capitalism does. It, it takes whatever you have and it repackages it and makes makes you feel good about being a part of a capitalist society, even when you say you're fighting against it. Yeah. You know what I mean? In your mind, you actually think that you're doing the right thing. And once they put enough buffers and uh, handlers around you to insulate you from folks who will pull your card or snatch your ass off stage, then, you know, then then you, you, you're you off to the races, you know? And this is what's happening in real time right now. Yeah, and I, I, that was very wild to me to see. So um, anyway, speaking of wild to see also, I had to really deep, dig deep and I need some help from you and the remixers because my Vernon philosophy uh, isn't helping me with this this show that I'm late to. Mm. But I just binged all three first seasons of this show and I admit to loving it more than I'm comfortable loving a, a commercial media project product. So I don't know if any of you have seen this show Southside, uh, but it is, it, I, it, I loved it. And what I like to think I found value in politically is the way that it, it, it does class and the way that it presents itself as copaganda, but I think is anti copaganda hmm. in a very slick way. So I don't know if you've had a chance to see any episodes or if anyone in the remixing audience has ever seen it, but I, I, I admit that I thought it was hilarious I love the the characters and the actors. The show Southside Yipper. I see you asking about it, and I, it's I about Chicago, it. about the South Side of Chicago, black folks. Uh, uh, two of the main characters are police officers. So at first, I was like, okay, this is gonna be standard propaganda in a comedic form, but it's not. It, it's 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 not pro cop. I don't see it as pro cop. And that's what I'm saying. So I was like, are they doing this on purpose? Are they messing with me? Is this like, is, is, did they slip? Is this, is this like a, a I don't know. So I, I need to learn more about the, the creators of it. I, and 
I don't know. I just anyway. You know, it, it's funny that um, I have, I haven't seen that particular show, but it is one that I've caught caught over um, a break that um, I, I got to sadly admit that I kind of like uh, called How to Ruin Christmas. And it's oh. uh, it, it's uh, it's <laughs> it's a, uh, a a show out of Johannesburg. And, uh, oh. you know, if, if folks haven't checked it out, I think it's on Netflix as well. Um, it's a cool little, well put together, comedic type play uh, uh, position about two different uh, classes of folks in the extremes, as far as in uh, in, in South Africa. So yeah, okay. So that, All right, this is this is this is what that is. This is okay, okay. Uh, uh, let folks want to check that out. And they actually have three seasons as well, so you know that that's a whole other program. But anyway. So then, speaking of class and silliness, there was one other thing that I saw that so so some folks know that my new favorite white uh, podcaster is R. M. Brown, and oh. uh, until he starts going too far over to the to the to the to the Sam Cedars and all of them, but but for now, you know, I'll I'll stick with him. But but I, I in in listening to some of his discussion recently about favorite films this one was recommended and I did watch it and I'd be interested to know what anyone else might think of it. It's called triangle of sadness Mm -hmm. and it does, I won't spoil it, but it does something I think very interesting also with the issue of class. Um, There's a fascinating discussion that Woody Harrelson of all people has in defense of Karl Marx uh, for instance, but it's, it's, I don't he's left of Jimmy Dore, but and definitely funnier than Jimmy Dore, but uh he hasn't failed me like Jimmy Dore did. So so and I haven't, you know. What, anyway, what, so Woody Harrelson has something to do with it or so Woody Harrelson is a is a, is a, a, he plays a role in the film. And again, I'm not gonna spoil it, but it, but other than to say that there's a scene where he has this extended conversation uh uh about Marx and communism and it's again it's it's always weird to see that happen in a commercial media product and it's done in a, in a way that I would not have expected a commercial media product to do but then ultimately the film itself what it does with class the issue of class and even depending on how you read it and this is something again I'm not spoiling anything but how you read it in even the issue of revolutionary violence hmm. So I definitely would encourage people to see that film because I would like to have a conversation with you, Kalanji, and others at some point about how the film ends okay. in particular uh, and how we interpret that ending. And, and anyway, I, I just think, so any, anyway, so like- what, what, What's the name of it again, I'm sorry? It's called Triangle of Sadness. Triangle of Sadness. Um, it sounds like a happy film. Well, yeah, it's, it, 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 it's 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 I think officially categorized as a dark comedy, okay. But it's yeah. I, I'll leave. Let me just. It's I think it's worth watching. It, it, again, whenever anyone's going to take a couple hours to do you know nonsense, like I'm obviously don't skip an important piece of work for this. Right, but right. when you've when you've carved out your two hours for today or tonight is my silly time. This is something I would recommend, and 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 um, you know, okay, you know. Okay. Uh, okay. Anyway, yeah. so 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 so, yeah, that was it, the, and that's all I had for this this morning. Just that's and and now I would start to get caught up in 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 the world and see what else is happening in the world, and 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 have um, maybe something more substantive to contribute next time we. We pop up, but um, you know, I want to. I want to ask the chat because they're usually pretty vocal. I want to ask them um, what are what are what are some of the things that you would like to see um, happen on Gorilla uh, Intellectual University? There, there's. Uh, I, I want to point out, and I'm not going to give folks the whole of it, as, as my my people would say. Um, I would say that this is an intro to something way bigger than than what we will show you on this screen. So I want to start with that, but I also want to ask, what are some of the things that you would like to see 
take place on Guerrilla University that you're not seeing currently on some of our other uh, programs or what should we incorporate that we are doing on our other programs? So, um, you know, we want to open that up to the chat real quick if folks have any questions. And folks who are not normally in the chat, because like I said, I, I get enough texts and, and, and emails uh, from folks that I know that are out there. So if anyone wants to uh, chime in and let us know what are some things that you would like to see happen on this particular program. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, I no, would. Uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I was going to say what some things you want to uh, bring on. Jay. Um, I, again, I, I'm I really don't have any particular thoughts other than to see more of what we already have been doing um, and just seeing how, you know, uh, and just more organizing that 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 sort of already existing collaboration or parallel collaboration. So I don't um, I have to think more about that. And and I'm interested to see what what our, our other two co-hosts will, will want. Um, we, we, we might do that. I want to see some of that, too. <laughs> we you know, we got to get I mean, I, we, we you know, we're, we're you know, we're yeah. still developing all the, the names and the, the logos and the look and everything. So so yeah, I would I would. Yes. Um, and uh, I want to hear uh, Leah's breakdown of riches. That's what I want to see happen on Gorilla. That uh, you want to see. Intellectuals. Uh, I don't know what that is, but okay. It's a new show on Amazon Prime. Uh, it's a it's a, a black a, a black capitalist. I haven't watched it, but it's a black capitalist. You know, it seems like a black capitalist bourgeois approach to the uh, Pan African involvement in hair care and beauty business. Okay. 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 And and Ricky Ryan said it was real good. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. That's why the Vernon philosophy exists. The better it is, the more we have to be careful and critical of it. So, no doubt. No doubt. But I'm sure it was good. Okay. Okay. Had a lot of pretty people on the cover. So, by the way, speaking of pretty people, I also watched the. Um, uh, all right, Ricky. All right, thank you. And and we let's get your breakdown of it too, Ricky. Um, uh, but but uh, I did watch the uh, the conclusion on Netflix of the Best Man series what did you think uh, about that honestly i thought it was it was a reminder of of my age it was a reminder of the money grab that people are making with rebooting all of these old properties you know the desperation of the streaming wars i it, it didn't it didn't hit like i i would have wanted it to hit um but uh um yeah, it was all right. It just didn't hit like I, okay. you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 and I, no, I, I have not it. seen this. Uh, I have not seen this. I didn't okay. even know this existed. Where is this? I know that someone mentioned it yesterday on um, on the panel, so I, I can look into it. I'm not sure. Uh, and shout out to uh, Bilal Sunni Ali, uh, one of the folks who's definitely been pushing um, – Lowndes County and, 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 you know, Imam Jamil, H. Rap Brown and Ed Brown and some of the other folks who uh, had serious work around um, Lowndes County organizing uh, that uh, original Panther formation out there, mm. you know, as far as on the political side, we will be talking about talking more about Lowndes County and upcoming uh, uh, shows, by the way. Right on. Uh, but, um, yeah. I think they wanted to I like go ahead. Oh, yeah, my, I'd bring on young revolutionary parents. No doubt. I, I mean, I, I like the idea. I don't know how that would be done. I don't know in what way that would actually be, you know, how we would do that. But uh like in terms of identifying and inviting the, you know, people on, but but I love the idea for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um I think that's a great idea. Anyway, go ahead. What, what were you about to say? No, no, no. I was just just um, thinking about uh, you know providing um, or looking, being excited about new ways to organize. 
that's just always always my thing and and you know just going hard this new year around the issue of political prisons it was good to see uh folks like Sundiata get out this past year and and Dr. Matulu Shakur um you know we need more of that you know we need more support we need more folks out there so hopefully uh Gorilla University Gorilla Intellectual will definitely uh you know add more ways to to the table in regards to not just um the organizing aspect physically but but the study you know the, the theory and the praxis and everything you know so we did have uh, i mean we did get the call the other day um from johanna and uh um gwendolyn to and uh and uh michael schiffman that we need more support around mumia uh in these in this next 60 days or so to yes. to encourage the judge to to conclude correctly that he should be freed or at minimum get a new trial right. um but uh um so yeah i would definitely like to support that with this show and 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 everything else we're doing here as well i think that's uh, very important yeah um is it, is, and well, and by the way just real quick on that note you know when people are saying to us to get people like Riza islam on or to 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 invite someone else on to that point about mumia reach out to these folks not right. to say come on with Jared and Kalanji, but to say raise your voice around Mumia. Right. Like reach out to the other shows that you all watch and listen to and tell them to do more of what we do uh and need more help doing. Um, yeah. you know, like where's Riza talking about Mumia and other political prisoners? Where's other your other favorite podcast? If you have one outside of BPM, I don't know how, but if you have one, you know, where are they on issues of Mumia? and political prisoners and getting these folks out, Leonard Peltier and others, uh, before yeah. they, you know, just drop dead. You know, I, I mean, mean, you know. R Rochelle McGee is going on 60 years right now. You know, I mean, really? And, 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 I, and I'm gonna keep it 100. I'm gonna keep it 100. I, I'm not hearing a lot from some of the folks who have benefited off of George and Jonathan Jackson, Rochelle McGee and others. You know, I'm not hearing a lot about Rochelle McGee. And and uh, folks like myself, um, I intend on being more vocal and, and more direct because I think it's imperative that if we're going to talk about certain things, then we need to address them as a whole. Don't just talk about Asada in name. Support Kamal Siddiqui, who is the 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 uh, the father of one of her children. You know what I mean? Can we do that? You know, uh, let's not just talk about political prisoners. Let's not just talk about Mumia, but also Veronza Bowers, who has been held damn near 20 years beyond his release date. Folks always talking about what they can't do. You know, folks always talking about, well, the, the state can't do that. They can't. Look, that's nonsense. But let's not just only get behind what's popular, because I see a trend. The quote unquote movement is very cliquish. You know what I'm saying? It's all about the sloganeering. It's all about, you know, you know, who I roll with. If we're African people, then I suggest and I urge us to fight for Africa as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Not just local, national, but but throughout the diaspora. You know what I mean? We raised hell and and and, and I'm glad that Brittany Griner's out. That's great. Let's put that same energy. Uh, behind some of these other political prisons because it's it's absolutely necessary. You know what I'm saying? You know, I think it's it it, it it's interesting. I, it, it's funny you said that because it did occur to me that that, and I'm gonna just say it this way: Biden agreeing to exchange Victor Boot for Brittany Griner, right, sets a precedent. So when you're saying the same energy for Mumia and others that Britney got, I would just. I mean, I mean, I'm not going to say yeah, less. Yeah, no, and, and, and no, and, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and you're right, you're right. But 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 what but what happened too is it it showed it showed um, 
it showed a, a, a certain degree of arrogance and, 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 and what happens under that pressure. You understand what I'm saying? Because, you know, they, they've always had this, we don't negotiate with terrorist attitude. You know what I'm saying? When that plesh, pressure gets applied, like, oh, this is going down like this. Now you looking silly. You know what I mean? Now we have to make some, some alterations. But the same thing has to happen with Flint and the same thing has to happen with Jackson. We can no longer become, uh, no longer be, you know, political suckers, man, where we just, you know, hoping and wishing and voting and, 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 and you know, and, and, and singing along with the program, man, you know, so yeah, you know, but, but it starts with us. It starts with an organized effort, not just about you joining your organization or your formation. There are plenty of organizations out here again, who are doing work. We have to organize on all levels, the local level. Who are the folks in the community that are building and are making change? Connect them to the national level, then connect them to the international level, right? But we skip over all that because it it looks good, you know, in the pictures and you know the shout outs. But anyway, I mean, there's you know, there's just not a lot of. Um, I mean, it's the same thing with the 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 the. Uh, that fake rightward move of a uh, populist move that we see in, uh, in media. Uh, there's no money on the left. There's no, there's no click baiting in talking about political prisoners uh, right, right. And, and, and freeing them is even more difficult. So again, that's why I, you know, I continue yeah. to, to, to love what we're trying to do here. Um, yeah. and, and I got, I have faith, you know, I'm a hopelessly devoted lost soul when it comes to our people. I admit that I'm a, I'm a sucker for love, you know, and, and, and I strongly uh, feel inside of my soul that there are enough of us who are serious about our plight and our condition mm -hmm. that that we will make some type of change. I have two generations under me, you know, so and, and, and that, that's literal. So yeah, my that's wild. Yeah. So my not giving an F attitude is it's 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 it, it's turning up a little bit more you know what i mean and when i say two generations under me i'm talking about yeah i have a, a, a teenage grandson you know what i mean so i'm not i don't have the luxury of, of of playing games when it comes to uh this this energy and this work and this this effort you know that that we as a whole are trying to make you know it's not a not a fly by night thing it's not a you know uh who's a part of the cool kid club. You know what I mean? Honestly, if I had my way, I'd probably be going around like Rick James slapping a lot of these folks that consider themselves organizers, but that's just me. That's just a bad dream I had. But anyway. Uh, like J. Rue said, one day, one day. Boy, look at uh, here. <laughs> hey, man, Daruba's calling me on the bat phone, so he's clearly not watching the show. Or maybe he's, he call, is. he's calling me as well. So, Pastor is he calling? What, what are we doing wrong? Is he is he trying to tell us we doing something wrong? Text I don't us, know. He texted me earlier. Uh, come um, through, Daruba. We'll send you a link. Come through, Daruba. Yeah, send a link. Real quick. Um, thank you, Yipper. Uh, uh, and 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 the background is so I don't know if you all got this, but but Facebook offered the new background. So I, I or Meta. So, so I created mine and that, and, and it looks like the movie up. So I wanted to see what I look like in the movie up. So, so that's, yeah. uh, and then, oh, oh, that was the wrong comment. That's what you were at. Um, but, and then yes, if Kim can help us unlock BPM membership gifts, I have not, I don't know how that works. Uh, yeah. but, um, I was just going through, oh, right, right. Is that right? That's the one I was looking at. Yeah. That's supposed to be me. That's you. That's me. That's boy, me. Boy, look just like you. You look just like me. I didn't. I didn't realize. Uh, I'm like, boy, look at that joint in the back, looking like JB. <laughs> Again, thanks for the super sticker. I'm just going through some of the stuff that I saved here. All right, we did that one. And David, I don't know if, and, and actually, I do know in in mainstream media studies and elsewhere, I'm sure Barbara Walters is described as in terms of her importance to uh women in commercial media uh i know eleanor cliff was a, was a big name in that space for for my generation stuff like that but you know um 
what does that mean for 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 us here? I don't I don't know. Uh oh, right on. And and soccer is um what our doctor told us was, my daughter's doctor told us was there you're more likely to get a concussion playing girls soccer than you are playing men's American football, which was not a joy to hear. And then especially, and then and then to learn also that there's some research that I don't think it's been, there's been a conclusion reached on this that shows that women are more likely to injure their knees if they're ovulating. There's a relationship between estrogen receptors or something like that in the knee and ovulation. And so again, my speculation was just that this was evolution's way of telling pregnant women to slow down while you're pregnant or preparing for pregnancy. But I thought that was spooky as well, or, or interesting or wild uh, as well. So um, anyway, uh, and yes, now I don't know, I don't think it was discussed in depth and with substance as medicine, but Best Man did talk about, they did have a medicinal uh, um, hallucinogen section of the film that was actually, I think, done or the series that was actually not entirely lampoony or whatever. It was like it, it was it was all right. Anyway, uh, I was assuming you went to talk to Daruba. I don't know if if that's if that's what happened. If you have an update uh, for I, us, I, I, sent, I sent him a uh, sent him a link if he wants to come on. I didn't I, I didn't I didn't call him just yet. But, he um, did. He's he's been sending a couple long texts. He's 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 okay. definitely got something to say. We always want to hear from him, of course. But uh, uh, I just wasn't okay. sure what was going on. So, so that's so. right. That's right. Uh, uh, Crooklyn, where um, mm. they have us believing black was in, black invented crack when they invented it back in 1963 with Kennedy, the double cross, something that, 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 have a, that bitch Barbara Walters, something like that. Yeah, 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 Chub Rock. Go ahead, Chub. Um, women have fought and worked in history pregnant. I, 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 again, I admit it, I was speculating. We have not been taught how to be safe physically in girls sports. You're, hey, you're right on, right on. I'm not saying women, I, I was just speculating based on what the doctor was saying in terms of uh, apparently some new research on estrogen receptors in the knee and, and knee injuries for women's athletes. But no, I wasn't trying to suggest women haven't been doing stuff pregnant for a long time. It was just, you know, but, but it was definitely fascinating that you do that, that um, women and girls in soccer get more are more likely to get a concussion uh, than, than men who play, um, American football mm -hmm. and uh um it's 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 crazy it's crazy yeah anyway um that's that that's that uh anything else anything else oh yeah we got this one um I I agree I I, I consume I have always consumed a lot of content and I think that that uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to my, even in my own career become more critical of it, because right. I acknowledge the limitations of even stuff I like. I mean, right. you know what I mean? You know, so, you know, um, I, and I'm, I'm I'm grateful um, that we have the opportunity to uh, do what we're doing on this platform as well, because, uh, you know, oftentimes we're in the middle of it and we don't really. I don't think I can speak for myself. I don't think that we we appreciate what we're doing sometimes because, you know, every now and then I go check out, you know, I get the opportunity to, you know, check out some of the other shows and I'm just like, wow, this is, this is, this is cool. We're actually doing this because folks don't know how it came about. You know what I mean? It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like we always planned this. I think that you and I talked about in the past how we both had ideas to do something like this, but we didn't necessarily know how to uh, 
jump started. So that combination between um, uh, that that uh, renegade culture and I mix what I like thing was was a natural piece. And we've had our you know just you know veering off a little bit. We've had our, our ups and downs as a platform, but I think that overall, pound for pound, round for round, you know, it's not too many out there like us, you know. And and I think that we have some real, you know, concrete uh, pieces coming on board. So, we no, right on, no, right on. I I, I fully agree with that, and. Uh, um, Especially after watching that. And you know, like like drink champs, this is my thing. Like, I like watching drink champs when they're talking about hip hop and music and right. the history of these artists. And when they leave the politics and the economics and all that stuff alone, it's enjoyable. Right. But when right. they start getting into these other areas, it, it, I, that's where I start to really feel the damage that they're that they're imposing, and and the the value of what we're doing uh, is more clear to me. Um, right. You know, uh, there's a lot of and then and again, I just want to shout us out for the attempt at the collective work. Right. Is you know everybody can have their own this and their own that, um, but I think that there you know there does need to be more organized collective effort in these media spaces. So, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm going to issue a challenge right now to all of these, because um, we, we, we have a, a lot of uh, folks who are, uh, are friendly to us on the left. I am uh, issuing a challenge that we get together at least once a month and push um certain points you know what i mean because of the fact that if you're going to call yourself uh left or progressive or a a, a quote-unquote nationalist or whatever it is you want to call yourself a pan-africanist whatever the case is you know white left whoever you know if we're out here pushing um our our media i, I hate to even use the word propaganda but if we're out here pushing our media then i think that it's imperative that we be on the same page at some point. It's not just, you know, you do your thing, I do my thing, and we shout each other out. You know, there's there's no art for art's sake, and there's no uh, there's no no uh, uh, politics for politics' sake. You know, we have to figure this thing out because this is what, like you you, you just put that DEI thing up a little bit earlier. You know, that's how they roll. You know, it, it's 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 a system. It's not an individual. It's not a, a small group or a small collective or whatever the case is. There's no organization on the planet that can save us at this particular point. No one organization. There's no one individual that can save us at this point. There's no platform that can save us at this point. But we have to make sure, we may have to make sure that we move beyond our little uh, little circles and ciphers and, and take this to another level. Some of you may like it, some of you may not. I'm not in the business of caring about what people like. I'm trying to tell you what's real. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think we can argue the the power of collective efforts, the power of collective politics and understanding, you know, and practice, you know. So that's just me. What do I know? I'm just a ranting, raging, raving lunatic here at Gorilla Intellectual, you know. So uh, likewise, likewise, we got the uh suggestion uh and i think a good one uh to talk about the january 7th africana studies lecture and workshop series that both of us are featured in oh, i forgot oh, all about I heard, that I heard, I heard we were keynotes i don't know how they got two keynotes but shout I, out to them. <laughs> so so i'll i'll bring up my instagram cuz that's the the one that i could find fastest and you're right um uh, I'm speaking, yeah, I, we're both keynoting. I'm keynoting in the morning and you're keynoting later in the afternoon. Um, you're really the one closing it out uh, and I'm opening it up. So I think that's appropriate. Um, and uh, I don't know to what extent f uh, folks can join live or, or to what extent what we do will appear on this platform. Right. But 
uh, we'll we'll definitely keep folks in the loop. And you can go to my Instagram. I believe you have yours on yours, and yes. and and get the, on, on the Twitter, code and the detail you know? yeah, well, on Twitter and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. But 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 speaking of, uh, is he there? I don't know. He looked kind of frozen in the background. Yeah, he looked like, like he froze uh, up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think we get him. Yeah. We got him. Uh, you, you right. ready? Come on, sir. Shake your head if you're ready. Who's oh, this my guy? Bad. I already did. What's going on, brother? How you doing? What's up, Daruba? I can't uh, hear shit. <laughs> <laughs> we we hear you, brother. So <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. This is how we started off. Matter of fact, we can sample that. I can't hear shit. You're right. <laughs> so anyway, as you see, turn that had, into a drop. Definitely yeah. turn that into a drop. I can't hear shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Wave at us, D. When you when you when you ready, and we'll, yeah. we'll bring you he up. Is wave uh, at us. We see you. You know. So. You but know. anyway, um, I think these. Oh, can I show the flyer again? Yeah, let me show the flyer again. Um, yes while while we wait and um it's got the i think maybe you can even do it from here it's got the qr code on it mm. uh which will take you to the to the uh, registration form i think i'm not sure um yeah, but yeah we going we yeah we're gonna have another sound effect for sure we gonna, <laughs> i can't hear shit yeah. um but uh uh so yeah anyway out of philly the uh right the philly Afri africana studies and shout out to right. our brother was um uh ishmael ishmael jimenez right isn't that his name yeah 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 he's a good brother out there doing work in the uh in the in, in philadelphia uh met him i think the the last couple times i was in philly um and shout out to the locks conference because uh you know we that that was a staple out in Philadelphia. Mama Coso rise in power. Right, right, right. We, we've lost throughout the years, but um, yeah. So that should be a good joint. Um, well, and uh, and I'll tell the I'll tell the remixers now. I'm you know mine is going to be uh, an extension. My my comments are going to be an extension of of a reflection on on Dr. Turner because uh, if we talk about uh, talk about people that we lost last year, hmm. um, uh, you know, and and if 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 I'm being invited to talk about Africana studies in any capacity, I'm gonna have to start with and and probably stay with with Dr. Turner, um, and just try to talk about what what he had in mind for Africana studies and why what his his you know why that vision is still necessary, uh, and even and even maybe more important. Yeah, where I probably go towards uh, lean towards uh, the dragon counterinsurgency. You know, um, you know, they, they they got me going on after uh Dr. Ball. So that that's just like, you know, they trying to No, no, I'm just opening that pressure. They're trying no, no, to no, no, no. trying to apply pressure. I'm gonna have to get it together. No, 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 no. Sure. I'm just <laughs> I'm I'm just the opening act. Uh <laughs> um but uh uh anyway, yeah, no, I think that's you know, anyway, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and, and that's kind of <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that's the um, the angle we're gonna move at, move on, because again, the whole theory and practice is such a uh, a, a necessary a necessary piece because we we get lost in the either or. You know, it's like we have to choose uh, what we're gonna do, how we're gonna roll, so on and so forth. So, you know, I think we'll be all right. We'll definitely be all right. I'm looking forward to it this Saturday. Um, is it this Saturday? It's the seventh, so okay, uh, okay. yeah, it is Saturday. Okay, cool. And, okay, this Saturday. right on this Saturday the seventh, and I'm and I and I, and and I'm on at nine a.m. All right, well that's okay. good. At least I'm on in first. I like getting it over with, <clears throat> and I like I like being early. Yeah, I'll be on at twelve thirty, I believe. So, um, thank you, know. David. Appreciate you, big pun in the building, Thanks, sir. Big pun in the building, the man, the myth, the legend. Um. Yeah, so I, I'll, uh, I'll, matter of fact, I'm going to see if we can get it broadcast on BPM. If we can't do it that day, we'll do a later date. But either way, we'll get you the information. And, um, you know, we intend on delivering this year and beyond. You know, I think that uh, everything else for me up until this point has been orientation. And I'm talking mm -hmm. about my life period. I feel like, um, I feel like uh, we haven't done enough. And I damn sure feel like I haven't done enough. 
Yo, look at this. Check this out. Look, I just opened my email and you just called it up. Uh, so I'll I'll answer um, for for both of us. Uh, well, let me, I'll suggest an, an answer for both of us. Um, but but just got word from from Brother Cameron who works with the Free Rochelle McGee Committee, uh, and they're hoping to come back on to talk about the coalition to Free Rochelle McGee and provide some updates and have another discussion. So maybe we can talk about hosting them here uh, next Monday. Um, if you're cool with that, I you know, we can Let's talk go. about that. And uh, yes. uh, uh, if, not, if not, we'll work it out when they can come on. But I think that's dope. And again, yeah. I think that's perfectly timed. This is exactly what we're talking about. That's right. You, that's you right. said we, we need more discussion of it. And people know that this is the platform. Yes. This is yes. the space for that. So, so and, and we don't know they're going to get a yes. Yeah, nah, we don't, yeah, and we don't take that lightly. It it is, and, and again, and I I, I got to stress this because I, I don't think that um, man, you know, just sitting in these seats, these uh uh um, uh, what 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 are the hissing seats that that your guy was talking yeah. about? <laughs> you know, just sitting in these rusty seats, man. It, it's like it is a I consider it a blessing, uh, and an honor to be able to work on behalf of our our people's collective movement. You know what I mean? The fact that that um, we've had Mumia call into into our, our platform numerous times, not once, at least three times. Right. The fact that we had folks like Akbar Prey call in from 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 the prison camps. You know, we've had a a, a broad range of individuals who who've come along onto this platform. Some you love, some of them you didn't care for, but it's OK. The fact is, we're able to do what it is we say we're going to do, and we're able to deliver. And that's without any sponsorship, any major budgets, um, purely, truly either out of pocket or on the strength of those of us, of, of those of you who support us as Patreons or support us as, as members or your, your super stickers, whatever the case is. You know, so we're, we're absolutely very grateful. But um, I feel that we we haven't given you enough yet. So we're gonna turn it up. But in return, we need some reciprocity. You know what I'm saying? We need you all to share what it is we have. Right now we had 21,000 something subscribers. That's great, but based on the content that we have, I think we could do a little bit better than that. It's also, and I, and I hope I'm not, you know, sharing too much of our business, but I think it's also important to point out as we encourage more support that, that the, the, the numbers, the growth of the channel and subscribers is not reflective enough in the views per video. Right. Uh, so to really help with the algorithm and to help the channel grow beyond just a, a, a number of sus subscribers, but in terms of actual distribution of the content, we do need more of those who are already subscribed to actually watch all of the videos that come out. Right. on the channel uh and that will help things go on and on as well um but I mean, we, we, uh, we, uh yeah we've had, i mean some of the people just i mean who are some of the guests we've had on the platform let's talk about that you know, i mean we, i can't we, even you know from pam africa to cornell west yeah. uh from from ti to 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 wise intelligent yeah. from from umi abu jamal himself to the people that work on his behalf, like Johanna Fernandez, Noel Hanrahan, Michael Shipman, Todd Stephen Burroughs, Lynn Washington. I mean, we've had the whole Mumia crew, including Mumia, on. Right. Um, and, you know, and on top of that, what? Thank what, you, V. What, what platform can you get someone like Karanga on, and and folks ask coming. him, ask him, you know, about about these discrepancies? Not not a hold back type thing, or whatever. And and for the record. No disrespect, but I'm not, that's not my T right there. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't roll with that particular uh, gentleman. However, you get everything from him to the BLA, to the Black Panther Party, to uh, the Young Lords. Uh, you had folks, I mean, we, we've had- We had Ricky Ryan. <laughs> Duh, you got Ricky Ryan on here. Come on, man. The soldier stories joints. I mean, seriously, in all seriousness, yes. in yes. all due respect to everybody else's platform and every other guest, to have that 
especially before the passing of Blood McCreary, which was last year too, right? Yes, 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 yes. I yes. mean, come on, man. I mean, we, you know, come on. That that alone should have blown up the channel in in the, in a positive, you know, pun intended, positive way. You know, what I mean, like that should have been. I mean, that, like that, we, that, that was you know, legendary. Come on. I mean, and and it's like, and I mean, for us too. And I think that the thing is, um, what a lot of folks don't realize is that this particular uh, form of, of of political education, it was available to a degree in the 90s and in the early 2000s with cassette tapes and CDs and DVDs and all of that. You couldn't just go to a platform and just get all of this, get all of this information on the BLA from actual BLA members, founders, so on and so forth. We have everybody from Sekou to Daruba to Jalil, um, and, and, and so many others, Silvia Baraldini, all the way from Italy. We had folks in Rome, you know what I'm saying? Daughters of Patrice Lumumba and uh, uh, France Fanon, you know what I mean? So to us, it is it is a, indeed an honor for us to uh, to to not only be the client, be uh, clients, but be presidents. You know what I'm saying? As the as the Rogaine commercial would go. So just, I mean, I'd be happy if I was even allowed to come on a platform and that's just me coming as as, as one of the, the folks that started this. And I, I mean that sincerely because- And we was about to have yeah. Daruba five minutes ago and it's only yeah. his his Ghanaian tech setup that's that's that's, <laughs> that's that's holding us back. So yeah. I mean, you know, like like he'll be on again. Like the idea, like like that's, to me, that's the best thing. Like Daruba is, is, is signifies to me the connection to that, that level of struggle that he would, he's in routine contact. He's right. in routine and he's in the chat sometimes. He'd be hitting us up. Like, I didn't think you should have said that, or you were wrong on that. Like he watches the content he's in get, like, I think that's anyway. So we've had yeah. people from the continent, you know, yeah. live and direct, uh, 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 with my, with my sister, um, uh, Mjiba Freya Watt in particular. And look, speaking of oh. speaking of which, D, you 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 with us? Can, can you hear <laughs> now? No, I ain't with your ass. No. I'm, <laughs> what the fuck you mean? Am I with you? Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. What do these get a hold of your ass this New Year? What if we got one bald head dude on the one side, dreadlock boy? They got something for your asses over there. Meanwhile. <laughs> What's happening, man? How y'all? Man, better now, man. It's good to How see you, man. We, who knows? You know, <laughs> you, hey, you, 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 just, you just come on the scene, busting shots, man. At least let let me grab my vest. <laughs> man, this is 2023, man. Ain't y'all tired of fronting, man? We fronted we, the whole of 2022, man. Man, we come was on, man. The whole the whole year, D. Hey, we fronted hey, hey, the, hey, the whole year, man. I said, the, listen. I, I, I'm going to throw somebody under the bus right now. I sent the whole, I sent a series of, well, you know I sent you something this morning, uh, Jared, and you, Kalanji, talking about your homeboy, Meek Mills, when he rolled up in here, right? Give us that report real quick. Yeah, man. yeah, I was going to. No, 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 no. I, I'll give it to you. I just want to tell you that I went back and forth and I asked, you remember I asked you, uh, Jared, the question, name one revolutionary that came out of the so-called hip-hop generation. Name one. And nobody named one. So I said, okay, cool. That's understandable. All right. One brother wrote me back telling me how, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the big fat dude from the Bronx. Um, what's his name? Africa Ben Bobby. Fat Joe. Uh, fat Joe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> listen, he told me how He's Fat Joe and Jay Z. You understand, have contributed to revolutionary movements on the DL. <laughs> so I wrote him back and said, well, because they kicked you some money. I said, because they kicked you some money on the down low. What does that mean? I asked for a revolutionaries that came out of this genre <clears throat> of music for an entire generation. Hmm? Every generation has a soundtrack. Huh? Right on. And in the soundtrack, in the soundtrack of of, of of the twenties, we had we had artists like Bessie. We had artists that was moving the thing forward, if not on a revolutionary scale, at least at least on a radical 
interpretation of black folks and their condition in their music. I asked him who, who now? Nobody could name none. Then this brother tells me about Panther Cubs. I said, so what are you talking about? Somebody's a Panther Cub because they can't choose their parents? Or it's because of their politics. He tells me how, well, you got Panther Cubs that's doing radical and revolutionary work right, right now. So I turned to Kalanji, who's my foremost uh, <laughs> authority on the work of activism of Panther Cubs to, to, to provide me with a name if you, if you got shame. Well, you see that shit rhymes. See, I could be a rapper too. You see, provide me a name if you ain't got no shame. Of one Panther Cub <laughs> that has adopted the politics of the Black Panther Party and the practice of the Black Panther Party rather than the legacy. Name one. Dick. 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 <laughs> Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Can't name none. Okay? <laughs> So, <laughs> why, why you got to throw me with the bus, man? You, you throw the whole bus, not under the bus. But go ahead. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just saying, now to your question about me. Okay? This was funny. All right. So, I know some of the... Some of the <laughs> hey, hey, I got my drivers. Here. Stop laughing, brother. Um, <laughs> oh, Lord. So, look, I was there at the concert, right? Because I happen to know one of some of the some of the co subcontractors, you know, for setting up the facility and everything. You know, hold, hold on, concert, tell, tell us about the concert. Where was it at? Where, right. Where's the concert at? And tell us about uh, the concert. What concert? Set up. The, give us the context for the concert. And what, uh, what uh, this was on. the Black Family, the African Family concert at Black Star Stadium on the third on the on the thirtieth on on the 29th and the thirtieth. In Ghana. So Mika arrived there on on the twenty eighth, I think. And, and of course, you know, given his status and given his, you know, notoriety, he booked into the most expensive hotel in, 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 in Ghana, one of the most expensive hotels in Ghana, that at that moment was packed with Africans from the diaspora. I ain't never seen so many black folks in one place at one time in Africa. Okay, black folks from America in one place at one time, then in the Kapinski Hotel. Now you can look up the name Kapinski and figure out where that come from. But anyway, he booked into this hotel. This five star hotel, and you know, in preparation for the concert. So I was there before, and you know, I was supposed to, you know, I know the folks. So everything was cool. Then when he was when he was arriving, I was there. In fact, I was at the gate when he arrived with my driver. I said, you know something? We should roll on inside with him in case something go wrong, right? And I changed my mind. Um so we drove off. A few minutes later, we got the, the video. He's walking like, he's walking like, you know, he's in the land of Ubla D like this. He's all stiff and stuff, walking through the through the entrance. And they jacked his iPhone, tussled him and pushed him about and everything. He could obviously see he was scared to death, but um, he got through and everything. But um, this is nothing unfamiliar when when artists from the diaspora come here, you know, to go to a concert because you have a lot of young folks here who have bought into the hip hop notion and idea of gangster rap. They don't bought that wholesale, you see? And they bought into the ostentious uh, um, uh, consumption of material things that they see in these videos. So if you look at most Afro beat videos, you couldn't tell whether they was made in Africa or whether they was made in the US, except that the African videos have have classier fashion. They fashions these got these young designers. They're really good, and they shine in these videos. But all the other things, you know, the ostentatious lifestyle, the slick cars, the Bentleys, and all this stuff, they are part of the video culture in Africa now. You see, and so my point was that Meek Mills like. All of these Negroes that come here, they never include the African diaspora that lives here in arranging and managing any of their visits and tours. Never. They always get in with, whether they're Nigerians, whether they're Ghanaians, promoters and, 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 and um, uh, uh, promoters and managers 
who are tied to the class, are tied to the political elite, who are tied to the rich in the country, you see? And so therefore, it's not, so in Africa, it's not so much who you know, it's who knows you that counts. Right. So when they see these, when they see our brothers and sisters coming from here, and they have a lot of money, they have wealth, and they have, um, and they have all these other attributes, they immediately say, oh, this is how we're going to pimp these Negroes. This is how we're going to play them, you see? And then we, we all fall into it. When yeah. Rick Ross came here, he was talking about dual citizenship. You had Cardi B, former hood rat. She came through, you know, she was talking about Africa was her home and all of this stuff. And this, this sentiment that we have for our motherland is, is, is used against us and exploited. When they're gone, all of us who were still here, living here, Ghanaians consider us white folks. Hmm. I mean, they don't consider me that because, you know, I cuss them out on, really? on cue. So <laughs> when they see me, they think I'm just crazy. And um, I'm on some dumb, I'm on some crazy stuff, you know. Right, right. But I'm saying this to say that we don't utilize what we have in the diaspora to empower ourselves anywhere in the world. We have more millionaires in in the African diaspora than they have in Africa. Right. You know, we have access to resources and stuff. And I know I know Jared has been keen on showing how black capitalism is 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 a myth game when it comes to black people empowering themselves. We can't get no power through that. But in Africa, on the continent, just imagine if all of these icons that we have raised to the status of, of cult leadership simply because they went from, um, you know, uh, um, um, streaming, uh, um, simply because they went from, um, you know, slinging yayo yeah, yo to, um, to, to, lyrical, to lyrical wit and music. You know, if we, if just five of them contributed um, chunk change to a consortium that could empower African uh, 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 grassroots infrastructures, Africa, at least in certain parts of Africa, with such investment, can be transformed. But none of these Negroes are thinking about that. Now, Meek Mills is going to be, I think it's today, he might be declared the chief, Chief Boogaloo, you see? So he'll be declared the chief. And you know why we get chieftaincies in Africa when we show up here in Ghana? Because they know that once they enshrine you as a chief and give you name that you are therefore obligated somehow ethically morally principally spiritually whatever to contribute to the development of that particular uh, chieftaincy in, in 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 village or town okay so they made you a chief for your money they've been pimping us since the slave trade bro i mean big pimping pimping ain't easy over here but they they get over with it they've been pimping us and i i really I'm really bitter and angry that our people don't see that, that these mm. artists don't see that. Hmm? That's what pisses me off. It's not so much that they're doing this to us, but we let them do this to us. huh? So every time there's a big concert and a big name that comes over, you know, from, 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 uh, from the U.S., we get played. Right. And they go back to the, I mean, when Jay-Z came here, they had him. Did you see the pictures of Jay? He was on the camera talking about he was Sheikh Boogaloo. And he and he went in his ancestral chart. And he, I mean, they had this Negro on the camera with, with African gear on and everything. You know? I'm serious. So so, so what? But no, what? everybody shoots past the fact. Everybody shoots past the fact that Jay-Z took his honeymoon in Cuba. Of all places, he took his honeymoon, in, uh, his anniversary in Cuba. Remember that, Jared? When he when when him and Beyonce celebrated the anniversary, I do. He took a trip to Cuba, and it caused a and little like a little controversy because <clears throat> yeah, they were worried about the it was with Obama's it, relationship with the with the embargo. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I think they're interfering with our reception now. Yeah, yeah, we, you we, froze. We, we got you. You good? You back? We hear you now. Yeah, Jared, I know you remember that, didn't we? Because at that time, you know, at that time, Asada was being pushed up and, 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 and publicized as the most wanted 
on the um, FBI most wanted list that she was a fugitive and that if any type of reconciliation with Cuba had to went down, it, it had to include her her um, repatriation or return to the United States to face charges. Right. I think that was around that time. So I said to myself, damn, why you picked there for 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 an anniversary? Out of all the places in the world, why you do pick sanctioned, embargoed Cuba? But do I have complete the thought? Hmm? We, we, and since then it's come to view, it's come to my it's come out on certain circles that the Cuban government was approached on the down low, if that could be worked out. And they was approached on the down low by people in his entourage. Right. Now that's not to say he was he was complicit with that or he was cognizant of that. Probably not. But my point is, is how it constantly manipulated and you ah. But that goes back to even what we were saying about Pele, Muhammad Ali, the state's attempts to use celebrities, black celebrities. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Jay-Z and Beyonce's honeymoon in Cuba was not orchestrated and then used for some other purpose, even even without them being aware. Um, oh, yeah. Or but but uh, do we have them back? Yeah. So we, we talked about that. I think I'm back. Yeah, you back. We talked about just what you're talking about in 2013. I actually just re I just posted that on Black Power Media a few weeks back um, when we talked about uh, the, the the bounty on the side of being uh, up and also uh, Jay-Z and his entourage going to Cuba during that particular piece, doing a bidding for Biden. I mean, excuse me, for Obama. Well, Biden and Obama, really. Um, so, so I think that we should definitely put that in the chat because that was very important important convo because we're talking about that was literally 10 years ago now you know what i mean and it's the same like you just said it's the same two-step it's not even they don't even switch the game up like you said they hit you with a little bit of money hit you with that crown and give you the opportunity to uh roam around the motherland as if you're some type of gift but yeah it needs to be more checking like you said they Got him for his iPhone, but we, we need a little bit more than that. Perhaps we could trade one of those guys for um, for Mumia. You know what can but we you get know out of that? But you know something. You know something, Kalanji. You know, although we may be, we may feel somewhat disheartened or somewhat dismayed by all of this. The thing is, is that it's nothing that we can't fight back against. It's nothing that we can't hold other people um, accountable to. Let me give you an right. example. In many of the in many of the European countries, in in which many a, a lot of these artists' records are sold, and they and they do concerts, they stream live on Spotify. In fact, Spotify is the one that 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 sponsored this concert with Meek Mills. It was Spotify, mm -hmm. okay? And 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 the fact that they do these things, and then when you look at Africans, ordinary Africans, even even Africans. Who have a little bit, who have a job and everything. In many of these countries, including almost all of the Arab countries in North Africa, a black person, a sub Saharan African with a passport from an African nation, whether it's Nigeria, whether it's Ghana, whether it's Liberia, cannot get a visa into their country. It's a long process to get a visa. But these same countries will invite our artists to come and perform. With no visa, I mean, they just grant them everything they need to come here. Now, what am I saying about this? That if our artists, if our, if the African diaspora refused to travel to countries that discriminate against Africans in terms of visas, in terms of their access to being able to travel, we should not perform there. We should do just like we did with South Africa. Boycott them. Hmm? Make it plain. Make prop. Make inf put information out. Why is it that in order to go to Dubai? the biggest shopping mall on the planet. Then he got a long list of about eight or nine or 10 African countries that they will not give a visa to. Serious, this is Dubai. And we look at the World Cup, we say, well, look at all these black folks that was at the World Cup in Africa, right? I mean, in, 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 um, in uh, Qatar, at the World Cup, right? All of those people that you saw at the World Cup 
were the children and relatives of diplomats and businessmen who were in that country, who was in Qatar. Right. You understand what I'm saying? That's how they got there. Ordinary Africans, they couldn't travel there. In fact, you should see what Africans got to go through to make Hajj, a religious pilgrimage to Saudi Arabia. You should see what they go through, you see? So we need to understand that unless we exercise our collective clout, politically, economically, and culturally, we're gonna always be treated like this. We're gonna always be pimped. We're gonna always be abused. And that's what pisses me off, is that these artists don't even want to know anything like this. And when they do hear it, they make like, hey, ain't nothing I can do, personally, hmm. you see? And this is what's, what, what I think 2023 is going to show, because given the nature of global politics, given the nature of how it seems like the West and is headed towards war over the Ukraine and other, uh, in other places, we see that the destabilization of Africa is proceeding under AFRICOM on a whole different level, then we have to begin to understand that we have, a, as an African diaspora, have to look out for ourselves first. I mean, the president of Ghana just, just gave a speech, you understand, criticizing the African diaspora, calling us, you understand, opportunists, calling us naive. Well, this is this guy is the same guy that's been begging the IMF for money, talking about how wealthy Africa is. Well, if we so wealthy, why are you begging the IMF? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. This is the same guy that wants to build a cathedral on the on the backs of the African poor right here in Ghana. He wants to build a cathedral. I think it's an 18 million million dollar uh, uh, endeavor. 18 or 18. Uh huh. He wants to build a cathedral. Meanwhile, people don't have no sanitation. They don't have no health care. They got poor roads. They spend less than one dollar a day to feed inmates in this country. Huh? But he wants to buy, he wants to purchase a cathedral because he's Catholic. Well, the Pope in Rome appoints the bishops all over the world. Huh? Ask the Pope to build the goddamn cathedral. Huh? The Catholic Church is a multi-billion dollar a year company. Get them crackers to build a cathedral here. But no, he wants Africans to, 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 to do this. Okay? And it's the, it's the same one, the same president, is the one that was kicking the woolly bobo with, 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 with your homeboy. What was that guy? The, uh, Boyce Watkins and, and all these black capitalists. They was all kicking the woolly bobo, taking group pictures together during the day of return, the so-called day of return. These Negroes, you couldn't even get into a meeting during the so-called day of return if you didn't have a wristband. It was exclusively in, invited. So they invited every Negro they could think of that was pro-capitalist, that was a reactionary, and they all came here. They all posted up here talking about how, how they were so relieved to be back in Africa. And they was getting instant passports. Huh? It's crap. It's game. And I just wanted to throw that out there. Wish everybody a Happy New Year. Hey, before you, before you. <laughs> hey, 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 the shit started himself. Listen, <laughs> we you, you, you ain't getting off that easy. I, I want to know because I because I, I unite with what you're saying, right? How does that trickle down to the, the current state of, of the movement? Because we have similar issues. Um, playing crackers advocate, we have similar issues. Amongst folks in the movement, Come on, man. a lot of, a lot of, lot of got too many advocates. Li liberalism. Why are you gonna advocate for money? Got a monopoly <laughs> on advocates. Come on, man. He don't need you to advocate. Just say it straight up. You understand? Yeah. The enemy's it, position is this. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so much liberalism in in in, in movement. Um, how do we combat that? Because I think that um, before we can really check any artist. We have to start with with our own quote unquote uh, house, you know. What, what, but how they do we duck us, that? Kalanji. They be ducking you since you've been an activist. <laughs> they be ducking us at home. No doubt. Don't act like we got. We could call up and say, "Hey, me, you going to Africa? Yo, bro, let me pull your coat for something." That Negro ain't got. You don't have him in your Rolodex. And no, if no, you I'm did, he ain't yeah. answering the phone. 
No, no, I'm talking about beyond him. I'm talking See, about. They, if, if they jump up, I mean, you had somebody that even said to me that, oh, <clears throat> among the revolutionary rappers that they know, that Common is, they could count Common as one. Common? Really? This is the Negro that backpedaled when when the when the white wing right wing racist was criticizing Obama for inviting him to the uh, to the White House. Then he start backpedaling about. Well, no, I, I, I don't, I don't well now he writes self help books that that and 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 has friendly conversations with T D Jakes and you know so you know uh, um, you know so common. I mean you know he's and he does movies now. He's like a he's like a silly actor now. He's not even. Th th so, anyway. so I'm, what I'm saying is, we doing this to ourselves, Jerry. You see, and the question that Kalanji asked, you know, how can we, how can we try to ameliorate this? How can we kind of like, you know, counter this? We can't counter it because these Negroes, from the Jay Zs down to little young NBA, whoever you want to call, little squirt, all of these, they don't talk to anybody that got revolutionary politics. Nobody. Right, right, and right. And if they did, they will tell you how they know more than you do. Right. So I'm not even I'm not even talking about them. I'm saying from folks who are involved in movement, these organizations, uh, folks that practice liberalism. You have, uh, as we talked about earlier, Rochelle McGee going on 60 years um, on lock. <laughs> you have Ronza Bowers almost 20 years overdue coming out. Of course, Dr. Matulu's out. Uh, of course, they, they brought Sundiata out. How can we apply full court pressure? How can we apply kind of pressure right now to, uh, to 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 get this uh, liberalism and other nonsense in check? Do you think it's possible, or do you think we um, we just gonna be banditos? I think you're breaking up. Okay. Okay. No. Can you hear me now? I think that no, you were fine. I think the Ruba's not. His connection is is okay. Because I heard you clearly. I don't think. think they may be breaking him up. Can you hear us right now, Drew? Uh, say again. Can you hear, Can you hear us? Now? Yeah, you you was you was going in and out. You got to understand here they got a very limited and and so when you have both video and audio on um, in a call, it gets gobbled up. Sometimes cut off. It has no very doubt. limited bandwidth. No doubt. No doubt. Um, in a nutshell, I don't know if you can still hear us. It was I mean, just, you can go to just audio if you want, Daruba, if that if you think that would help. I don't know if you even heard that. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. Can can Daruba, can you hear us? And and maybe you could try talk as no, no, he would need to be hold on, see, we need to do it. Hold on, we do it this way. Your this speech way. is gobbled. Okay. If you turn your, uh, I think he would have to turn his video off. I tell you what, turn your camera off. Okay, and see if we can I don't think that. that's gonna work. Let me see. Let me see. If you just, just turn, stop just your, turn camera, your camera, off. yeah, you're good. You're good. Your audio is it now. Yeah, your sound a little better. Okay. Yeah, because because cool. we still hear you I'm, fine. Okay. Am I clear to you guys? Yeah, yeah, you're yes. good now. You hear us Am pretty I good. Clear? Yes. 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 Well, y'all, y'all are coming in gobble, but if I'm going oh, out wow. clear, that's all that's needed for the moment. Yeah, that's cool. So, <laughs> if you understand what we're saying, then that'd be great. Um, yeah. So, well, in a nutshell, I think. Yeah. State of the movement. How do we um, put the reins on it now? The only way to put the reins on it is to take these these so-called icons that are now running around. You understand, um, um, fostering the notion that somehow you know there is success because of because of you know this the, the artistic skills, you know, is to get them to try to understand that all art is political. That's a very basic understanding. All art is political and whether they intend to convey a negative political message or a positive political message doesn't detract from that fact 
And if all art is political, then they at least must take political considerations in what they do, what they say, and how they use their image in our community. And how can we hold them accountable then is, is a serious question then. It's another question. But at least we should be able to make artists understand, entertainers, artists, or whatever. I mean, sports is an entertainment, okay? It's, a, it's part of the entertainment industry. So how do we make sports figures, uh, 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 sports stars, understand that they are not the spokespeople, they are not the spokespersons for black people, that, they, that their opinion should remain their personal opinion, and that when they stick a mic in their face, they should go back to the counterintelligence memo that says that black youth should be made to understand that if they become black revolutionaries, they would be yeah. dead revolutionaries. And that the only uh, um, um, uh, 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 admirable course for them is to become people or individuals that white society could respect or endorse. Namely, an entertainer, a ball player, or someone who is in the art, in the art world, you understand, and, 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 and this is, uh, these are the type of ideals that we should uh, aspire to. And that COINTELPRO memo has proven to be accurate, correct, and on the money. And, and I say the only way we're going to change this is that as things get worse for the empire, it's going to get worse for black artists. And if they don't understand, we take what little wealth and notoriety that they have at this moment and invest it in the future, not only of themselves, not only for themselves and their children, but for the whole of black people. We need to have our artists invest in us, not in some bullshit notion about selling sneakers, you have a sneaker contract, or you know, you own you own the corner, you own the corner sports good sports goods store now that you went in there and now you're employing people in the community. That's some Mickey Mouse nickel and dime stuff, man. And Jared is the one of the first people that I know who constantly has become a pariah of, 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 of the so-called black capitalist simply because of his basic analysis of white supremacy and capitalism. I mean, this, so I'll be watching some of the programs that Jared's on and listening to some of these Negroes, you understand, talking about black wealth and black buying power. And I said, man, how come this isn't obvious to these people? What Jared is saying should be obvious. And then I realized that they don't want to hear that. And that what they're saying, they have a vested interest in it because they spent their whole life trying to be what white folks said was successful. That's it. Word. They've been abused by white supremacy and capitalism so much that they think they deserve to get beat. And if they don't get, and if they, if they, if they beat the system, then they're better than the system. And you, you ain't really focused in trying because you too could succeed if you do, if you use my formula. So you got the boys Watkins on there telling you how to invest. You got all these other poop butt niggas talking about, excuse my language, poop butt Negroes on there telling you how this is the path to success. You understand? And this is the path to glory. You know, how to, how to pimp, how to pimp Wall Street. Now picture that. Picture, picture Wall Street getting pimped by some poop butt Negroes. <laughs> I mean, they, they, put the, they put the P in pimp, Wall Street. That's that's the that's so the actual like the cryptocurrency. Remember all the black folks with the cryptocurrency when it came out? How don't we get Jared started, man. How, <laughs> I don't want to get Jared started. That's right. Don't, don't get me started. Hey, that look on his face. There's that look know. on his face. He's <laughs> he start, he start, he starting to lean back now, like, <laughs> like <laughs> back, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, his head get tilted to the side, he go like that. <laughs> I know, I know, right? It's about to be on. <laughs> then he throw the stutter say, step. I don't want to be a <laughs> but I told you so. <laughs> then he throw that stutter step on and it's over. So hey, the it's 2023. What what what's what's the plan, man? How do we get these PPs out? How do we uh move forward? How do we organize? Um, you know, what, what are some of the joints that um that, that we should revisit? Because we know even going back to your book, uh, 
beggars on horseback. These are things that you've been talking about for decades. You know, what 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 what's the plan? Where do we need to be right now? Man, I'm I'm asking you that. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> That's my question. I, listen, I, I think first of all we have to have a movement. Right. And I think we know that in the United States there is no real left. Right. You know, there's no left in the United States. And and the black liberation struggle, even the black civil rights movement, was the leadership of what was historically a left in America. You know? I mean, we know that most of the rights that women claim now, we know that most of the rights the gay and lesbian folks claim now were the consequences of our struggle for black liberation and human rights in the 50s and 60s. You see? But do they still have we heard from our our LGBTQ community? Have we have we been given our props to that? Nah. Have we been given our props to this by 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 the so-called women's rights movement? Nah. You see? When I mean they're good, I mean, this Negro on the on the on the Supreme Court there, what's his name? The one that the one that was trying to smash on um, Clarence Thomas. Um, that, Clarence that's, Thomas. What's his name? Clarence, Clarence Thomas. Clarence Thomas. Ah, Uncle Clarence. Yeah, my, my, my brother. See, 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 that's what Cornell West would call him. My beloved brother. <laughs> oh, Cornell. You see, that, that's what he would call him. Ah, we might have disagreements, but it's not a disagreement of the soul. It damn sure is a disagreement <laughs> of the soul and spirit. It's like saying we all worship one God. I don't worship the same God the Ku Klux Klan be burning crosses for. Right. You know? So let's not get into that. You know, and that's another thing that I got a beef with with, with Jared about. And when I talk when we was talking about Dion in sports, I keep telling folks if he would have left God out of it, it would have been all good. <laughs> but when he's talking about he got <laughs> We talk about he got a collect call from God that he could that he had to pay for. Oh, oh, Jared. Or, 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 no, nah, Dion said that that was his pitch. Like Dion oh, was okay. saying that 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 his decisions are made because God called him collect and he answered. He had to answer. That's right. Yeah. That's what he said. God now, called him why collect. couldn't he have That's just what I said. I said God, God don't have a universal calling card. He called him on Listen, WhatsApp. It, right. Now he got to call collect. You got to call me collect. I think he was trying to prove. No. I think he was trying to show this was, this was a call he couldn't refuse. Right. I think that's what's his point. Metaphorically speaking. I'm trying to work with you on that. But I'm just saying, he didn't have he, to bring God in. Even if God gave him a collect call, let's assume arguendo that that was the case. All he had to do was say, look, I feel as a black person, and I need to get I need to get into the HBCUs and try to change the culture and help these black kids, you know, get to the next level and develop them so that they could be so HBCUs could be on the same level as every other college uh, 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 um, uh, 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 system in the uh, in in the country. So if he left God out of it, then when he took a better a, a better bag, then nobody could have fought him for that. But when you say to black people, especially in the Baptist South, deep south, that God sent you there. I mean, that's some TD Jakes shit. Yeah, Mississippi, that's some TD Jakes shit. I didn't think TD Jakes went to Mississippi. Here. What same difference? But when you go, when when you listen, you had videos of Dion in 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 kids' school in kids' homes. You understand? Listening to hit singing hymns and stuff. Okay, singing gospel music, praising the Lord Jesus. Our boys coming to your school. Why did he have to do that? All he had to do was say, "It's on me. This is what I want to do for black people," and he did it. He did do it. Okay, and the fault is not with him. The fault is with all these black millionaires, the same ones we're talking about, the Jay Z's and all of them. P. Diddy gave a million to Jackson State. All of these Negroes, if they said, well, look, he's doing such a good job in the historically black schools that we let's each kick in 500,000 and we'll top Colorado, I mean, we'll top uh, Colorado's five. Five million a year. We'll make it six million a year for him to stay there. Dion would have stayed. 
He'd have stayed. You think? I believe he would have stayed. So when when is the sports show with you and okay. uh, Hiram coming, man? Because I keep hearing these rumors that you and Hiram are going to be doing the sports show on BPM. That's that's Jared's doing. That's what Jared's doing. Jared, oh, Jared. is the is the. I feel like you agreed to it though. Scenes, to get us- <laughs> I agreed I'm, to. Well, in principle, I feel like I feel like this is in principle. <laughs> <laughs> Not in actuality. Oh, I agree okay. to it in principle. Oh, See, man. I, I told myself. You're right. I did agree to it. In, I said that was a wonderful idea. And it, if it came to fruition, you know. <laughs> now, now I know, I know, I know. I'm starting. To, I'm starting to sound like Kanye West, right? Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but no, I'm saying. But I mean, I think you agree with me, Jared, that if 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 black alumni and 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 and, and wealthy people, especially wealthy black men who admire or who or who or who appreciate black education, okay, and who are wealthy, if they had put together a pay package for Dion and say, man, later for them crackers in Colorado. Okay, we'll give you six million. See, but now if he chose, there's a couple problems I have with that, Daru. But just very quickly, one would be I'm about to be the referee. Well, one just very quickly, (laughs) one would be that black capitalists are trying to be like white capitalists, and their white capitalist friends are always telling them, which is the one cardinal reality or truth for capitalists: don't invest your own money. So, so the, the you know, don't do one what? reason I could see you don't invest your own money. So, and, and that would be, and that that opens the door to the first wave or level of problems that even black people with relative degrees of wealth are not going to want to use their own money as an investment to support someone else, someone else's salary, especially when there can be no return on that investment, which is my number two point. There can be no return on the investment because even if you pay Dion more than he would make at Colorado, the amount of total revenue that he would have to operate with for recruitment, for paying players under the table and all that other kind of stuff is nowhere because Colorado has the 80,000 seat stadium is part of the, what is it? The whatever big conference that has the enormous ad revenue and TV budgets. No HBCU has that infrastructure, has that ability to be, uh, for advertisers worth the investment. Uh, uh, and then the people who graduate, the last point I would raise is is that the people who graduate from HBCUs don't make enough money to contribute back in to do what the boosters at Colorado are doing. So th- so my point is, is that, th- th- that, that, that my, my issue with Dion was similar to yours. If Dion just said, if Dion used his time there to expose this colonial or neo-colonial reality, of, and instead of turning it into this whole thing of God called me and I'm doing what, you know, what, what need, you know, I'm demonstrating what, what, you know, I'm the revolution. I'm doing this for the people. If he had, if he had avoided all of that and said, look, this is all I can do because this is the context I'm working in. And then he went on to Colorado. I wouldn't have had any pro- I wouldn't have had any real issue with what he did. But he didn't do that. He he presented a revolutionary path, which is what black capitalists do. And then they show you how 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 limited it is when they go get that white money, I which is all that, that there is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know, man. Well, I kind of agree with you on that. I kind I kind of agree with you on that part, though, uh, 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 Jared. But I still think I still think that that um, that. If he had, I mean, it came out later how 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 the how the administration at Jackson State was jacking money from him, how he had contributed um, uh, almost half of his salary to improving the facilities there for these kids, which in turn brought on sponsors to improve the rest of the facilities and all of this stuff. He had a lot of black. Uh, 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 celebrities and stuff come through that was making contributions. But I think basically what you're saying is true. You know, that he, he, he is also, even though he has taken a different path to how he's got to where he did, he also fell victim to that idea and that notion that investment in black 
um, institutions um, had to had to somehow um, uh, had to somehow pay better, somehow be more be more be more lucrative than investments in white institutions. Therefore, to invest in a black institution, you were taking risks that you wouldn't normally take if you wisely used your money elsewhere. You see, right. so that but I, he kept putting it, but 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 his but he kept putting it back on black graduates not kicking back money and uh yeah, black well, universities not that or but that's what he I, kept saying and he I, kept I saying mean, the hbcus haven't organized themselves and all this other kind of stuff but they have is is it me or are, are these guys just overpaid as a whole i mean shit you're getting five million dollars to coach i do understand you know comparative to some of these other coaches i understand that particular piece but you, you're not struggling you know what i'm saying it's not like like it's hard out here uh, for you for you to survive and whatnot, and to to build whatever kind of empire you're building, and I think you well, know, he was be- making five million. He was making three hundred something thousand a year, and okay. then he had sub he had coaches under him that was making far less than that. And then when you look at the salaries of coaches in the SEC <clears throat> or in the other conferences, you know they were I mean they was making stupid they making stupid money. So he said from the beginning that if he got a job offer that was more lucrative. He would he would look at it, but all I'm saying he should have left God out of it, especially when you're dealing with black people, you see, and 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 so black people feel betrayed because of that. Not so, I mean it's one thing for uh, for black businessmen or or, or, or or black professionals or even workers to understand somebody taking a better paying job, right. but he made it look like his calling at HBCU was some type of messianic uh, 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 calling that he couldn't back away from. You see what I'm saying? And he ain't Je- and he ain't Jesus. He didn't go to the cross and get crucified. That's why I say Mississippi If he was got Jesus, down. then I understand if he stayed there and got crucified. Right. And say, I've turned down five million in Oakland, but I'm still here. Y'all can just mess over me. I mean, Underpay damn. me. I'm still I, here. I, I think Al Sharpton make more than him. But anyway, um, this is our first episode. Why are you gonna start on that, brother? Why are you want to start? You know what? You got the two wrong people on here to mention to mention bobblehead out. Hey man, you look here, man. <laughs> I, I thought I got the ball when Al I Roper. was when I said boys Rockers. I thought Jared was gonna go off. I thought he's gonna lose it too, man. <laughs> he I see you got. Food. He even got darker I around the headline. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned Roland, and then you would have went off. Hey, listen, man. We 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 want to bring you back on. Um, this is our, our first uh, episode of Gorilla Intellectual University, right? So um, we definitely want to have you back on to talk about uh, a, a, a number of other different things. You know that that. Uh, that aren't I'm you doing? Sure aren't you doing a symposium, a, a, a lecture series? Aren't you doing a lecture series uh, next week? Or, this week or something? Yeah. Um, uh yeah, that's supposed to be uh that's Saturday. What we was just talking about. Jared's looking like oh right, like yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> Jared looking at you like him, like he this is his first time. I was confused. It. I was like, yeah, you yeah, know, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we'll you know, maybe you could join us yeah, on that. That's true, right? You do yeah, a lecture yeah, yeah, yeah. series, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's gonna get started. But we plan on doing the same thing on BPM, some type of um uh with with the really university, bringing on different folks too actually teach so it's going to move beyond just a, a show itself but i think that political education um if i'm not uh speaking too soon will be uh the the, the center of of what it is we're looking to bring to the table All right absolutely okay cool well you know i'm I'm traveling tomorrow i'm coming back to to new york tomorrow okay um, okay yeah so and, we make uh, that sooner than later then well, I'm I'm only staying ten days. You okay. know, we'll I get need you to get in out ten of days. Garden. I need to get out of get out as far, quick as possible, man. I don't know when the hammer gonna fall on you guys. You know, so. <laughs> hey, man, we'll make sure you're here, brother. Don't trip. <laughs> well, I'm south of the Sahara on the eve of Armageddon, so I'm good. Hey, you know? man, you. Um, <laughs> hey, hey. Hell is hot, no matter where you stand on the. On the... <laughs> it's ninety. It's ninety two right now. So how is it there where you at? To say you want to act like that. Oh, okay. if, I, if I was to turn this around and you can see, you can see out my door. You can see how beautiful I, it is. We, we outside. didn't want to see it. 
Huh? Hey, Jay, see, see how you want to act now? When you live down here with us, you know what I'm saying? When I helped move him down here, it was all good. But now all of a sudden, he want to go back to Africa. You know what I'm saying? Oops. All of a sudden, I've been here since 1993. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, right Jet out, right? But um, now, this wasn't whimsical, this wasn't whimsical, brother. Not at all. Okay, okay. This, right on, right on. But anyway, man, I'm sorry I went on a rant on you guys on the second. No, nah, it's all good. We we want we 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 want more of them. We're gonna have you back on and uh, make it as regular as, as we can. And we just need to get. But you I want y'all. I want y'all to really mm -hmm. ask these questions to these to these performers and these artists. We need to make an issue out of the fact that they're performing in countries that won't even give visas to Africans. Right. Right. What is with that? You see, hey man. Look here, man. Hey man. And 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 what, don't even give a visa to a librarian. Don't even give a visa to 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 a Ghanaian. Huh? Hey man, you, you you was talking about uh uh Dion. I mean, hell, they wouldn't give clean water to Jackson where he was at. So shit. I mean, that's you true. know, <laughs> you know, so he, he arguing about his check. Shit, right? He can't even get yeah, a good but, glass but of water. Same, but we need to understand too that Jacksonville, according according to the books. The mayor is the son of a pan-African nationalist. Yes, we we, we, right? we, 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 we we rolled down there together to his funeral. Right, which brings me to my next point, is I asked the brother, which I mentioned to you earlier, what's the panther cub? Hmm. What, do, what does that mean? Right. You know, you have parents that were that were a panther, or you had parents that were in the RNA. And so what are you doing now? Oh, you're carrying out the program and the politics of the Black Panther Party, you know, and you ask yourself how? Right. When we got the political prisoners that we have in prison, that are hardly ever mentioned, that right. we got buffoons who could stand up in the Black community, that we got, we, how do you get that money? <laughs> That's your money? Oh, okay. I just want to make sure how y'all ain't snatching my money to pay this guy. Yeah, get a receipt, brother. Uh, 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 only, only I'm sorry. I was. Uh, <laughs> no, that, that, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was. I just got a, you know, a plumber just did some work here, and oh, I was okay. about to jack. I was about to jack his pay. We you we know, thought that was the yeah. farmer who was making sure you know. No, no, no. I was about to I was I was about the jackers, but you know, I'm all about the working class. No you know, doubt. believe me, I'm all about the working class, but I understand how the working class could be exploited of an individual like me who's broke. <laughs> you understand? So <laughs> what? Yeah, but oh <laughs> anyway, no. I'm only joking. So nah, no, I'm exactly. saying you know, this is what we mean by a movement. I know, Jared, do you remember when there was talk um, all in the media during the height of the so-called demonstrations after uh, George Floyd's um, assassination and murder that, that, that the hashtag movement Black Lives Matter was the new Black Panther Party? Yeah, and one of our favorite discussions was when you were saying that Black BLM is not Black, the Black Liberation Movement. Yeah. But so we had individuals who were at one time saying that they, 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 they were carrying out the legacy of the BPP. Now, where are they now? Where's, where's Patrice Colors and the other one and Black Lives Matter? Uh, could you tell me where they at now? They have a nice house in, in LA, right? And uh, a YouTube deal. Oh, cool, cool, cool. No so, no so that means if I was homeless, I could go camp out on the, I could go camp in the garage, right? <laughs> I or would mean, I get shot? Would I get shot for trespassing? Hey man, Daruba, what, what do you think about the EFL in Ghana and Quasi Pratt from the '90s Rawlings days? And thanks, Quick Quicks Peps for the super chat. I don't know who the EFL. Who's the EFL? I don't know. Ask, ask for clarification. Ask Can for you Quasi clarify Pratt. that? Yeah, go ahead. Gracie Pratt is, Gracie Pratt is who, uh, who I um, call the last, the, the last Bolshevik in Ghana, <laughs> the last, the last truly revolutionary um, uh, a Marxist in Ghana. 
But Quasi is a good man. He's been consistent. He is. Uh, he has an organization here of of, of of young socialists, seriously struggling to try to change the uh, the dialogue and the paradigm here in electoral politics in in in, in Ghana. Uh, we need to really appreciate that, like in a country like Ghana, the ruling elite um, and the ruling political elite are usually from basically five or six families. Mm -hmm. And these five or six families go all the way back to the, to the slave, to the slave trafficking. Literally. Ethnically speaking and literally. Linguistically, ethnically, culturally, regionally. Um, um, so, so it's very difficult for someone like Kwesi Pratt, who, is a, who has been a, a, a a, a Marxist and a Leninist and a revolutionary Pan-African to even be able to breathe here freely, you see? And so I really appreciate Kwesi Pratt. I think that um, I was in Venezuela with him um, 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 during um, the elections there um, several years ago um, as an observer and um, and Kwesi Pratt is genuine. He's legit. And I think you should read his analysis of, of how Nkrumah was overthrown by the CIA. Mm. It's a very interesting read. And how they and how the CIA conspired um, uh, with certain families here, certain um, elites and, and, and political groups to, to overthrow and neutralize Nkrumah. And our irony of it is, is that I don't know if you saw the recent recent interview of, of, of that man that made, of, of the producer that made the um, documentaries on Kennedy and Platoon. What was What's his name again? Oliver Stone. The, yeah. yeah, I saw Oliver his. Stone. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. Did you see that recent interview, uh, Jerry, where he was talking about um, Yeah, I did. I, I know we're breaking up, uh, but I did see it. Um, but Daruba, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, man, I'm gonna have to run. I got a rap. Uh, yeah. uh, I hate to, do, I hate to do it, but yeah. but we're gonna have to, if we can, table this and 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 extend this conversation next time, and maybe we can start with uh, uh, your point about Oliver Stone. No doubt. As a matter of fact, uh, well, the, the, the only thing I wanted to say about Oliver Stone was he said that he wasn't, a, he didn't, he wasn't really aware. Of, of, of how nuclear energy could fit into the new paradigm of, of, of renewable energy in a beneficial way. He thought at first it might be a little dangerous, but after reading this a particular book, he realized that nuclear energy could play a pivotal role in, 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 trans, in transitioning from fossil fuel. That was my point. And what I was going to say is right here in Ghana, in Accra, there's a place called Atomic Junction where Kwame Nkrumah had started to, to, to build a nuclear, uh, um, a, a nuclear plant so that Ghana could be energy independent. And it was sabotage. That was my point. And so if, if, if Oliver Stone just got hit to this. To yeah, the, I saw him the, talk about that. The, yeah. uh, if he just got hit now to the value of nuclear energy, and in, in relationship to transitioning from fossil fuel, Kwame Nkrumah saw that almost 54 years ago. Absolutely, without a doubt. Yeah, 60 plus. Yes. And no, he never got, yeah, and he never got any props. No one ever mentioned how far reaching the, the vision of people like Kwame Nkrumah, Sekou Torre, and other Pan Africans who had liberated their peoples at that time, how far reaching their visions were for Africa. No hey, bro, with that, with that you, in brother. mind, it's a perfect way to end this segment. Salute to the works of Kwame Nkrumah, Robert Sabukwe, Sekou, um, uh, uh, Odinga Odinga, uh, Patrice Lumumba, you know, um, Winnie Mandela. And, and, and so many others that put that work in out there, home and abroad. You've been checking out Guerrilla Intellectual University. This is our first installment. This one might have been a little rough around the edges, but y'all know we about to do around here. We about to put pressure on it. So we appreciate you. Appreciate the Ruba stopping through, um, talking that talk. 
you know, he, he started off cussing us out, but he good now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, we, we'll see y'all in a minute, man. Yes, really Peace, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Right, Catch you next see. time. All right. Yes. All right, Black Power. Black Power. They say when you wear Black Power Media gear, you can accomplish anything. You can play any and every position. Coaching, to kicking, 